Yep. Full, full stat pages for both teams pulled up, so if you want me to look up something specific, let me know. And then we'll just have live. Okay. Please remain standing for the presenting of the colors followed by the National Anthem. Today's color guard...
Hello and a very warm welcome. You've joined us live from the Camping World Stadium in the city beautiful Orlando, Florida. Since 1978, the Rattlers and the Wildcats have been playing on this very gridiron every single year in the Florida Blue Florida Classic. My name is Michael Torillo. Happy to have your company. Happy to have the company of Chris Shaw. Chris, this is one of the biggest HBC football games in the country. We've got 50,000 people here in this, and I almost called it the Citrus Bowl. Camping World Camping. Stadium today. <laughs> yes, we do. What are we looking forward to today? We're looking for an action-packed, high-flying, pass-and-run game. A lot of action that's getting ready to take place right here on this very historic field right now today. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Oh, I mean, you have to be excited for the Classic. It doesn't matter what the team's records are. It doesn't matter what the, the players are. When you put on the maroon and gold or the or the green and orange, you know, it, it's a it's a rivalry game. Anything can happen. Listen, come third week of November, records mean nothing. Records don't mean anything. From here on out, it's all about the bragging rights. It's about bragging title. Who is going to leave out of here tonight with the bragging rights to say, hey, we're number one in the state of Florida. Let's take a look at one player to watch for each team. For Bethune-Cookman, it's got to be tight end Kamari Everett. He's caught a pass in every single game since joining the Wildcats, that 21 straight contest, and he was a preseason SWAC first-team offensive player. Everett has been phenomenal all season long. He comes with he comes with everything you need, everything you're looking for in every player. And for Florida a and it's got to be Isaiah Land. He is the reigning Buck Buchanan Award winner. That goes to the best defender in the football championship subdivision coming off a season with 19 sacks and 25 tackles for loss. One thing I like about him, he keeps his head on the swivel. He's always looking, always open for the alert for ready to make the tackle. Coin toss going on down on the field. Wildcats in anthracite tops, anthracite bottoms, silver helmets, or, uh, yellow numbers, and maroon trim for Florida a It's ice all the way down. White helmets, white jerseys, white pants, orange numbers and a green trim. We've got the bands out here. Bethune-Cookman marching Wildcats just performed the pregame show, yes, which was did. amazing. Like, this is my first college football game I've even, like, been to in a couple years since graduating college, so I forget the pageantry, and I forget about everything that goes along with the game, and, and you just sit in here and you soak in the atmosphere, and it's incredible. Well, listen, just open up your eyes, open up your heart, and open up your ears, and get ready to expand out on how wonderful this crowd, the band, and these teams are getting ready to lay everything out on the line. Beautiful venue here. They've got the Florida Classic logo at midfield with the two helmets. Rattlers end zone on the right. Wildcats end zone on the left. Our referees today are out on the field discussing things pre-game. Referee Wyan Myers, umpire James Rogers, headlinesman Joaquin Davis, Derek Smith, Curtis Lowe, Charles Cologne are the judges, Doug King, Brandon Bullock, and Vernon Brakefield as well, and the communicator is Clement Hall. Being a referee myself, not for football, but for soccer, getting a game like this from a designer is a big deal for them too. It is, it's a very big game because you got to make sure that everything is coming out right and you want to watch every single move that is being made on this field, on this gridiron today. Teams are getting ready to come out. The Florida a and Rattlers, eight and two. Lots riding on the game for them today. A win would put them to nine wins for the second year in a row and a potential trip to the FCS playoffs as they sit just on the outside of the bubble looking in. If they win here today and some and some results go their way elsewhere around the country, they could be playing but for there, a national title. There's an opportunity that these young men out of Daytona Beach can come out here and just ruin every effort that they can possibly have. Yeah, they Bethune-Cookman only 2-8, and eight, but they have been in a lot of contests, close losses uh, to Prairie View A&M, to Alabama State, to Alcorn State the last three weeks. So this is a team rounding into form at the correct time. So as we get ready for the kickoff, FAMU is getting ready to kick off, and Bethune-Cookman is getting ready to receive the ball. But look at that logo in the middle of the field. All this is being sponsored by the Florida Blue. A uh, Florida Blue at the top, and you have the Florida Classic right underneath. And then you see the two helmets, the Rattlers and the Wildcats. And then you see it, this thing has been going on since 1978. And the Cats and the Rattlers have been playing football since 1925. Yes. That's when they first met on the field. FAMU leads the overall series 45 to 24 with one tie, but the last decade has mostly been Wildcat dominated. They won nine straight from 2011 to 2019. What a historic run for Bethune-Cookman University, and that's what FAMU is out here to do. They're out here to say, hey, that's not going to happen any longer. We're back in on top, and we're taking over. We are just about to get started. The kicker for Florida A&M, 
Chris Fadul has the ball of the tee at the 35 yard line. The Rattlers wearing all white, trimmed in orange and green, will kick from left to right. Back to receive for Bethune Crookman is Darnell Dees, an electric quarterback. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Electrifying is the proper word that you want to use for this young man right here. And, and Jim, Jimmy Robinson is also back there. We'll see who they kick it to. It's going to go towards Robinson on the left-hand corner. Caught at the goal line. He's going to bring it out. Left-hand side, 10. Trying to get to the 20, and he is buried at the 19-yard line. And that is where bethune Cookman will start their first offensive series of the day. The one and only Mr. Butler, Trickon Butler, made the stop. And this is a defense for Florida A&M that really prides itself on taking away the pass. They only allow 191 passing yards per game for their opposition and with a passing attack as uh, deep and aggressive as Bethune-Cookman is, that could be an interesting matchup to watch today. Yeah, that's what, that's what the DBs are looking for, seeing what they can stop in the passing game from Bethune-Cookman University, but when you got a special tight end, you never know what to expect. You can always expect the unexpected. Two receivers right, one left. Jalen Jones, the quarterback in the gun. He fakes the handoff to Bird. He escapes out to the right. There's room to run. He's going to throw over the middle. That pass is caught at the 30-yard line, up to the 35, and tackled at the 36-yard line. First down, BCU. That was Dylan Lee on the reception. Stopped by number one, the number one and only Eric Smith of FAMU with a nice little hit, clean hit. It was a clean hit that came through. Nice crossing pattern as well. Jones doing well, moving, moving out of the pocket when the pressure came. He has got quick feet back there. Now he is Snap in solo. We set up for a screen play. Screen play to the left and getting just past the 40-yard line is Kayshawn Bird, the running back, who is out in formation as a wide receiver on that play. They'll gain about five yards. This is going to be an amazing game here today. Uh, Bethune-Cookman wants to come out and make no mistakes, and they want to come out and play the best of their ability getting down the field and winning this classic game. Something to look at, Kishon Bird is close to uh, 1,000 rushing yards on the year, and that's a drop by uh, B Dylan Lee as he was in the flat, and the pass goes incomplete, third down and five. They were trying to set up the screen again. Almost looked like the exact it, same play. Almost the exact same play, but FAMU was already on top of it, ready to go. As this crowd is coming in and everybody is coming in, the crowd of people look wonderful. Yeah, it's a great to see a so big crowd at a football game. Jones, alone in the gun. Three receivers to the right, what, two receivers to the left. He takes the snap. He stands in the pocket. He looks over the middle. That pass is caught at the 47-yard line. It's grabbed by Marcus Riley. Is it close to a first down? They are gonna move the chains. First down, BCU. What a close call. What a close way to pass that ball in. What a flat route coming right across the middle. And BCU early on in this first drive is not afraid of that middle of the field where those linebackers are hiding. They've gone two passes right over the middle for their two first downs. They Bird motion, motion Bird out of the flat. Draw Jones. play from the quarterback. Jones going to keep it on pass. Gets past the 50, the 45, and wrestled down at the 40-yard line. Nice little read option there from Jalen Jones. This is a good drive by BCU. That was Isaiah Merger on the stop right there. He called, it, he called a swift of the draw and came up and made but didn't make it stop enough because it was a first down for Thune Cookman. Yeah, Jalen Jones using his athleticism to weave his way through the defense. First down and 10 for BCU at the Rattler 40-yard line going right to left. I formation, now Bird motions into the gun. Wide receiver motions to the left, draw. They fake, fake the hand off the Bird. Jones Defensive troubling, come up. In, in trouble, tries to throw, oh, it's kicked off at the 40-yard line. BCU's going to have it all the way, and looks like this one's going to come all the way back. Jones pushes the defender out at the 40, at the 35-yard line of BCU. Disaster David Morgan. David for... David Morgan is on the pick, and he's run. He tries to get it in, but he is officially stopped. Disaster for Bethune-Cookman after a fantastic start to the drive. Jones was chased out of the pocket to the right. Thought it was going to throw it away. He tried to force it into a tight window, and it was just undercut beautifully by the defender. And Florida A&M takes the ball away. You got to win that turnover battle. That was that was one of the things that Coach Sims was concerned about turnovers. He wanted to make sure that we go out here play a solid game. That was Javon Morgan's team leading fourth interception of the year for Florida A&M. That's what we just talked about. These defensive backs, they keep their head on the swivel and they watch everything and they try to take everything away from their opponents. Starting quarterback for Florida A&M is Jeremy Musa. 
He's alone. Three by two are the wide receivers. He takes the snap. The defense is coming, and they're going to swarm him down wow, at, the 40 bar, at the 40 yard line. Huge sack for ECU on the first play of defense. When you say all 11 to the ball, that's what it, that's exactly what it looks like. All 11 men to the ball. I think they're going to get Malik Burns credit for the sack as he was the first one there, and they're going to push the Rattlers back seven yards second down and 17 they're going to spot the ball at the wildcat 39 yard line that pocket just collapsed in on him and he didn't know what to do he was trying to figure out something and it was too late by the time he realized what option he could use we line back up musa with one receiver or one running back shot uh, running back excuse me one running back riding sidecar he ball takes the snap. snap he looks he goes for the crossing pattern and a nice tackle made out there um by De Omari Hill Robinson. He's one of the names to watch for this BCU defense. Florida a &M gets almost back to the original line of scrimmage, picks up third down and 13 from the 35. Hill Robinson has been great all season long, being man-to-man -man coverage and being on top of his opponents. Uh, I like this young kid. I really like this young kid. Musa line back up. Musa claps his hands twice, doesn't receive the snap. Looks to his left to receive the play from the sideline. Get ready to make some move, making some adjustments on the offensive side. Three receivers bunched to the right, single left. Running back, sidecar left. Third down and 13 for the Rattlers. The ball is snapped. Musa over the middle, the middle and wide open, making the catch at the 20-yard line. First down, Florida A&M. I believe that was David Mangio with the catch. A nice post route right in front of the safeties. Came right across the middle. Fam, you look like they're not scared to go down the field as as well. Musa being Musa. chased. He floats it into the flat. It's caught at the 10 and wrestled out at near the five yard line. Tackled by Jamon Eford, the linebacker. But it will set up first and goal for the Rattlers. As we go, no huddle coming into the ball is snap. Handoff up the middle. The running back in the game right now for the Rattlers is Jalen McLeod, a graduate student, and he doesn't get anywhere. It's going to be second and goal from the four. But this is how quickly the game of football can change. BCU was driving, and then one interception, and a two minutes later, the Rattlers are on the goal line. As the crowd get excited for this Wildcat defense to play, Lines up under the quarterback. It's McLeod in the backfield. They're going to give it to him on a stretch play to the left. Touchdown, Florida A&M. Florida, Florida A&M comes in and take the lead right now, 6-0. to zero. Points off turnovers. It's a big killer. That's going to be a very, very, very factor for this game on both sides of the ball. Who can control the ball and who can take care of the ball this evening? The Rattlers go up 7-0 on a four-yard touchdown run by Jalen McLeod. McLeod, a redshirt senior from Jacksonville, Florida. As we set up the extra point. This is Jose Romo Martinez on the extra point. It's blocked. BCU picks it up, and they're only going to get out to the 20-yard line with it, but it's only six points for Florida a and A little bit of a silver lining on the opening drive for the Rattlers. Nice block, and I'm trying to find who it was. It was Darnell Deese Darnell on the Deese block. Picked up, picked up the block and ran off and tried to run off with it, but was caught just in enough time before time he out. could turn that thing around. Time out of the field. We'll take it with him right here. It's 9.57 to go. First quarter, 6 nothing Rattlers. This is the Florida Blue Florida Classic on the Cat Eye Network.
Welcome back to Camping World Stadium here in Orlando, Florida. It's the Florida Blue, Florida Classic between the Florida AM Rattlers and the Bethune Cookman Wildcats. Rattlers with a 6 0 lead. An extra point was blocked by BCU after a four yard touchdown scramble by Jalen McLeod, but that was all set up by an interception thrown by Jalen Jones, and it's important really to keep hold of the football. That's going to be the most impactful piece of this game here tonight, making sure that we could take control of the game and control the ball, making sure that nobody can take the ball out of your hand and turn your your defense into offense. Jose Romo Martinez has the ball on the tee at the 35-yard line, so just as we were a couple of minutes ago, we will start again. I'm quite sure Bethune Cookman is looking to come back into this game and make sure they don't make any mistakes and control the ball even better this time around. Yeah, last year in the Classic, uh, Florida A&M won 46 to 21. I think BCU, e even in uh, an eventual loss, will want to keep the game closer than that. Here is the kick. It spins end over end. It goes to the near corner. That's the left-hand corner. Yeah, it's taken to the goal line up to the 10, up to the 15, and an ankle tackle at the 22-yard line. Returning the ball was Antonio Oliver. And mm. being stopped by the one and only Kamari King on that down right there. So Bethune Cook will get ready to come back out, picking up the ball right around the 22. That will be at the own 22-yard line. They have to wait on the referee to place the ball down. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Jalen Jones back into the game. I think the referees get excited to catch a flashback every now and then. <laughs> As we line up. Referees not in pads today. <laughs> They're in stripes. Jones in the gun. Running back is Bird, sidecar right. One receiver right, two to the left. They're going to hand it off to Bird for the first time. He tries to cut back, and he's going to be met in the backfield and dropped as there was a man right there to meet him. It was Richard Summers. Richard Summers. On Richard the tackle for Florida a and Looked like a loss of a yard. Yeah, and that's tough when you really rely on the running game to try and set up the pass, because Bird is such a dynamic runner. If he's gonna have trouble finding space up the middle, the BCU offense might have to be what that one-dimensional kind of offense just throwing the ball. Bird in motion as we line back up. Ball is snapped. Jones. Jones with the draw. And, and he's just going to be run down at the 20-yard line. Another loss of one. So this will get to be third down and 12 coming up for BCU. That was the one and only Eric Smith on the stop right there who was right in on that tackle to make sure Jones don't go anywhere. This is going to be tough. That defense of FAMU, is look, they look like they're hungry. Yeah, the first drive, BCU was having time in the pocket was Jalen Jones to, to pick his pass. He's going to have to pass now, third and 12 from the 20-yard line. Ball Jones snap. in the pocket. Pocket's He's having to roll back, and he is sacked at the six-yard line. A huge sack for Florida a and They forced three negative plays in a row. Kamari Stevens from the defensive end spot comes in and wrangles down Jones, and it's a three and out for the Wildcats. It is tough for Bethune Cookman right now as their back is against the wall. They're getting ready to punt out of the end zone to this, make sure that they don't get anything than what they need. This is <laughs> Benjamin Lennon to punt, the Australian senior from Viewbank. He's set up with his heels snap. almost at the back of the end zone. It's a high, Hot. short kick. It's going to bounce at the BCU 40 and take a Florida a and bounce to the 35 and be down to the 32-yard line. Short field for the Rattlers here. I don't know if the wind played a factor or if it was just a high kick, but it was just a high kick that came out and didn't push out as far as it could have as they would like it to go, but it pushed out enough. But the hard part about football, you never know which way that ball is going to bounce. Oh, they're going to get Florida a and with roughing the kicker and an automatic first down for BCU. So the first penalty of the drive is a drive extender for the Wildcats. Big mistake there. It works in their favor. So they get the ball back. So are they going to come back now and try to get down the field? Or are we going to go into the run game or are we going to back into the passing game? Well, they were most successful on that opening drive when they got the ball in the flat on screens. And I think they probably will want to go back to that. I want to see some bunch formations over towards the numbers. We'll, we'll see what they do. They spot the ball at the 22-yard line, and I think there's going to be another timeout there is. There's another timeout. 7.51 to go first quarter. It's Rattler 6, BCU nothing, but the Wildcats have a first down when we come back. This is the Florida Blue Florida Classic on K-92-3. 
Cat Eye Nation, uh, excuse me, Cat Eye Network Radio. That was a short break. Very <laughs> short. <laughs> Bethune Cookman after the running, uh, roughing the kicker penalty for Florida A&M starts at their own 20 yard line. Actually, they'll spot the ball at the 22 exactly where the original line of scrimmage was. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Jones in the gun. Bird sidecar right, two receivers right, one to the left. They're gonna hand the ball off. No, Jones is gonna keep it and he's going to be run down again. And the ball's on ball the ground and B Fam, Florida A&M has the football. It's a second turnover for Bethune-Cookman, and the Rattlers are set up in the red zone at the 19-yard line. This defense is just coming out here and just manhandling of the offensive line for Bethune-Cookman University. Swarming to the football, I think you said earlier, 11 to the ball. <laughs> 11 to the ball. And that's exactly what the Rattlers are doing, specifically on the defensive line. And it looked like there was a it looked like that last play was a read option, and Jones could have handed it off to Bird, and he had a little bit of space. He chose to keep it. And well, they was trying to get down the field. And from the looks of it, it looked like they were just trying to get down the field and wanted to throw that ball, but it just didn't work out in their favor. This Rat defense is coming out here to play. Rattler's offense back on the field. Quarterback Jeremy Musa. Only one completed or two completed passes so far today by Musa, but one of them was a big one, a 25-yarder down the middle of the field that set the Rattlers up in the red zone last time. The ball is he's, snap, hand it off. He's going to hand it off left to Jalen McLeod, who's been the feature back early for the Rattlers. He's going to gain four yards to the 16-yard line. 17 is actually where they'll spot. It's only a gain of three. This Wildcats defense is going to have to step up a little bit, led on the defensive line by tackles Jaden Loving and Judas McKenzie. They're going to have to come out here and play hard. The ball is snap. Hand off. Hand off to the right. And it's going to be pushing the pile as McLeod. He gets close to a first down. He's not going to quite get there. He's going to be tackled at the 12-yard line. They need the 10 for a first down, third down, and two. He's not that big of a back, but he's pushing that line back. McLeod just 6'1", 245. And right, a little bit short for a running back at the college level, though A.J. Davis, who we might see, is 5'11". <laughs> <laughs> the Rattlers like to do running back by committee with McLeod, Terrell Jennings, and A.J. Davis all over 200 yards rushing for the season. As but we set up, offense back, all FAMU offenses back up, overload right. It is still McLeod in the I formation. Two receivers plus the tight end to the right, nobody out left. They're going to hand it off weak side to McLeod. He tries to barrel through, and he falls forward for a first down to the seven-yard line. And it's for the second time in as many drives. The Rattlers have the ball inside the 10. What is Bethune-Cookman defense going to have to do to get into this game and to turn this ball over? Well, I think they're going to have to just try and stop up the run gaps. It's really important for the, uh, the linebackers to come in and support the run defense because if you let McLeod just rush on you the whole game, you're going to end up being on the field a lot and end up being really tired. And at that point, the quarterback, Musa, can just take the top off the defense. We line back up. Musa is in a shotgun formation. Musa the snap. Hand, hand off, off to McLeod. McLeod. He's got space over the middle of the field. He's going to be wrapped up at the five. He's pushing is he the pile. Get is pushing? He's going to be stopped at the two-yard right line. And that is numero cero, Rosendo Lewis, the junior, on the tackle for BCU. They line back up, no huddle. Rosendo Lewis is in the top ten of the SWAC in tackles per game. Looking for confirmation from the sideline as they line back up. So for the second time in this first quarter, 5.30 to go in it and counting. Florida A&M has the ball on the goal line. They spot it officially at the two. McLeod once again behind Musa. Shotgun formation. Timeout. And out, timeout Florida A&M as they could not get a play call in. Six to nothing, 5.12 to go. This is going to be... This is going to be a fun, strange game for Bethune-Cookman University defensively. Uh, they're going to have to come in, and they're going to have to take defense and run defense into offense. Yeah, and talking about they're backed up to their own goal line for the second time in as many drives, what do you plan for as a defensive coordinator or a defensive line coach when, when your back is to the wall like this? 
all you can do is come out and say dig deep and make the stop. You're going to have to figure out a way how to make the stop, and we got to find the weakness. But that's why we have the defensive coordinator uh, to come in and say, hey, this is what's going on. This is what's taking place, and this is what we should be doing down on the field. But defensive coordinator from ECU is Darren Hayes. And at this point, the Wildcats, they, they had great offense on the first drive, just an interception, stopped it, and they haven't gotten much going since then. I think what needs to change is they've got to rely on the run game more. They tried to one bird once, it got stopped, but I think you've got to keep feeding him. He, he, he's one of the top backs in the swag. You have to keep feeding your, you have to keep feeding where your energy is coming from. If your running back is hungry, feed the beast. <laughs> That's what we say. That's what you do. So if you get that running back the ball, have the old line open up that gap, and let's push the ball back. We got to push the. You have to push the old your D line back in order to be progressive in this tournament here today in this game here today. Okay, Sean Bird also has four 100 yard rushing games this season. He needs two yards to crack the top 10 all time in rushing yards in BCU history, currently sitting at 1,800 for his career. I got a couple of good rushing yard records myself, rushing to the table to eat dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's something we are keeping an eye on. Kashawn Bird, obviously only one, res only one carry, and that went for minus two yards. Um, the stats are not updating for us here, unfortunately. So we're not going to have live numbers to talk about specifically, but we, you know, we can talk about drives and possessions. and As we see them as they go forth throughout the game. Yeah, yeah. It's going to... A lively crowd here at the Florida Classic. And it seems like they're still coming in. Yeah, well, there's so much to do with the Fan Fest outside and all the excellent barbecue and the, there's games out there. Now, it's th almost like a carnival atmosphere. This is your first Classic here, It right? is indeed my first Classic. I've been to many a game here, um, bowl games and soccer games and all that, but never, never a Classic. Oh, there it is right there. That's the Bethune-Cookman Marching Wildcat Band plan for you that you hear. And they blow the roof off the joint. Well, okay, here we go. Rattlers. As we come back in from the timeout. Second and goal at the two yard line. Bethune Cookman back against the end zone. It is still Jalen McLeod in it running back for Florida a &M. One substitution coming in late for the Wildcats as Devontae Hampton runs in to be, I believe a linebacker. Yeah, yes, he's going to stop up right there. Whistle, and here we go. All right, we're back in. Back in the power out formation for FAMU. Motion to the right. Now he comes back to the left, fakes it. Hand off, Hand off. up the middle. Did he get there? Is no. It? I believe the BCU defense stopped him. Oh, they're calling touchdown. Was there a second effort by Jalen McLeod? Right, yes, there was. Say touchdown. touchdown, Florida a and &M. Wow. Well, the Rattlers have used two BCU turnovers and turned it into two Florida A&M touchdowns. And the Rattlers quickly on top, 12 to nothing. Remember, the extra point the first time was blocked. Can we do it? Can they do it again? Well, it's it was blocked the first time by Omari Hill Robinson. No, excuse me, Darnell Diaz, and he is out there again. But they have a but the Rattlers have a very good kicker in Jose Romo Martinez. He actually leads the team in scoring this season. That kick is up. And that and kick it is good. Is good. Five minutes and one second to go in the first quarter. It's 13-0 Rattlers over the Wildcats. BCU tries to figure out something to do on offense when we come back. This is the Florida Blue Florida Classic on the Cat Eye Network.
Welcome back to the Florida Blue Florida Classic. My name is Michael Trevello. And Chris I'm Shaw is alongside me in commentary as the Wildcats trail Florida A&M 13 to nothing. 5.01 to go first quarter, and it's the third kickoff already for Florida A&M as they kicked off to start the game as well. You know, I think he's been getting good exercise in when his leg thus far this <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> they do have a fantastic kick away against, again, this is Jose Romo Martinez. Although he did have his first extra point blocked. Back to receive Jimmy Robinson the third and, and Darnell Diaz. Well, they've put Diaz on the left-hand side because that's where all the kicks have gone. It's going to be a kneel down in the back of the end zone for Diaz, and they will come out to the 25 yard line. We were talking a little bit about what needs to change for the offense well, before we went to the last break. And I think it all has to start with Jalen Jones, right? It does. It does. Uh, Jalen is going to have to uh, come back and he's going to have to try to get rid of the ball a little bit faster according to this defense because they're swarming him before he can even say hype. And they're not even bringing extra pressure, right? No. It's, it's just four on just four, four up front and Florida a is winning that battle. So, so here we go. 5-0-1. And the Wildcats are on their own 25. They go right to left in the all gray with silver helmets Shot and gold formation. numbers. Three to the right, one to the left. Jones with Burr to the backfield. Looks as if a linebacker wants to show a blitz. They do bring extra pressure. It's quickly to the outside and caught by Daryl Powell Jr. Quick, Just a quick hitter to the left. Only got about two yards, but it is a completed pass, something that... On their last possession, BCU didn't have any of, so a step in the right direction. So it, it looked like we we're going to make that move like they said they were going to, they need to make and getting the ball down the field. Back in shotgun formation, power out formation with the running back to the right. Trips to the right. Same formation, they're gonna throw to the far side this time. That pass is caught and up past the 40 yard line, tiptoeing and pushed out of bounds. Well, that's about the ball though, 39 still. First down, BCU, Kamari Everett for the first time today has a grab. First time grab that he gets it in the game, uh, but that's going to be a key factor, watching him to make sure that he can get the ball in his hands so we can get down the field. Top receiver for Bethune Cookman, 399 yards on the season, averaging 11.4 yards per reception. He's got six touchdowns, which also leads the team. We line back up, shotgun formation. This time it's two by two, ball on the right hash. High snap for Jones. He's going to hand Burr it off to Bird. Bird bounces to the right. He gets bounces a block out to the, to the right. 50. Nice block. And he gets out of bounds at the 49-yard line of FAMU. I said give it to Bird. They gave it to Bird, and he flew away. Feed the beast. <laughs> Once you feed the beast, the outcome of the game can always change. First down. Bethune-Cookman University. They actually spot the ball at the 49-yard line of Bethune-Cookman right almost at the midfield stripe, but it is still a first down BCU. Still two by two, the receivers. Back in shotgun formation. Two and two receivers on each side of the field. One high safety for Florida A&M back there. They're gonna swing it out to the right-hand side and the pass is dropped. It was a little bit too hot to handle for Cameron Overton and it's second and 10. That's the second time we've seen Jones throw a pass like that. It was a little bit too far in just front. A little, yeah, it went out just a little bit too far. I know he's, he's got a lot on his mind looking at that four, that defensive four coming at him. So he's trying to make sure that he get rid of the ball, but in enough time and in an accurate that, matter. That defensive front is led by Michael Watson, the second, only a freshman, but he lines up on the right side as a defensive end. Bird motions into the backfield, now second and 10 for their own 49. Jones takes the snap, nice pocket. Now he's forced to roll to his right, looking down the field and ah. it's incomplete. He just threw it beyond Krishan Bird who had gone in motion over the middle from the running back spot and it is third down and 10. It was right there, right by the hair of the chinly chin chin, but he missed it right off the fingertips of, the, of, the, of his hands. But again, we're seeing Jones have to roll out pretty quickly to that, avoid the pressure. That pressure is coming in and it's coming in hot. Let's see if Florida A&M decides to dial up more pressure. Third here. down. Third and 10. Oh, it looks like they're going to bring the pressure, too. It does look like it. Both linebackers are up towards the line of scrimmage. In the box. Jones, the floor, time to throw. Now rush. the pocket breaks down. He rolls to his right. He's going to take off and run. He cuts it back, makes one defender miss. He gets close to a first down. It depends on the spot of the ball. I think he might be just short. Just short of the first down, look like. Now, let's, let's see where the referee spot the ball. Down 13-0. If it's, if it's fourth and an inch on your opponent's 41-yard line, I think you kind of got to go for this, Do you right? take it? Do you take oh, it? Oh, they gave him the first down. So our point is 
null and void, it doesn't matter. First down, BCU at the 41-yard line of Florida A&M. Second trip into Rattler territory today for the Wildcats when they were in this similar position on the first drive of the game. Jones did throw an interception. Were the coaches listening to us as we talk? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe they are. Maybe they're tuning into the Cat Eye Network. Bunch formation left. Hand off to Bird up the middle. No, they're going to swing Green. it out to the right. And the defense was all over it. The catch was made by Marcus Riley, but big number 63 wearing white and orange was there to bring him down. That was Rick Taylor. Rick is right there. He was right there. He saw it coming, yeah. and he was already on top of it. And that's the second time that they've gone play action and chose to throw a swing pass, and the defense was right there ready for it. And it's happened twice in a row now. Loss of five on the play, second and 15, back at the 46-yard line. Back in shotgun formation, single back in the backfield. Three receivers by one receiver, throwing over the middle. It's caught by Everett at the 40, down to the 35-yard line, and barreling close yes. to the first down. Did he get it? No, he's gonna be one yard short. It looks like he's get one yard short. But that's another reason why Kamari Everett is the top tight end in the swack. It looked like he was gonna get nowhere near the first down when he caught that ball, but he made two defenders miss in open space. Power, power right through both defenders and made it right to the inch away, just inches away and he's, uh, from making the first down. And he's not a small guy, Everett, 6'6". Six, six is the tight end, but he made a nice little move in the middle of the field there. Third down and one. Do they give it to Sean Bird, or do they throw another swing pass? Everett in motion, left to right. And, and it looks like it's gonna be a false start as it, it looked like the left tackle move for the Wildcats. That's Darius Baker. Yeah, and he, he got suckered in and got suckered in and kind of went over the line, but they're going to push it back? Yeah, they are going to push it back. Now from third and one to third and five, this does open up the playbook a little bit because you could see they were going dive all the way, either with Jones or with Bird, and the defense was ready for it. So even if they had snapped that ball, something tells me that they wouldn't have gotten it. Now you can be a little bit more creative here on third and six. I don't know. That formation that they had, because you, you sent Quayshawn right over the middle, and he looked like he lined up behind the court, the center. Third down and six at the 37-yard line. Receivers two by two. Now they motion Bird out of the backfield. Jones takes the snap. Pressure comes. He's forced to roll to his right. He's at the 40. He's going to take off to the 30. First, first down, down and more to the 25 and pushed out of bounds near the 20-yard line. And That's a little a bit of extra. Line. First down, Bethune-Cookman University. First down, Bethune-Cookman. It almost looked like one of the defenders for Florida a the man that ran him out of bounds, which was James Ash, maybe had followed through a little bit on the sideline, but the no flag comes down, but it is another first down for Bethune-Cookman. I'm liking the way they're moving the ball here, Chris. Yes, fam, Bethune-Cookman is moving the ball. They figured out something, and they got something working in their scheme now to get the ball down the field. Approaching the red zone, first and 10 from the 22. One receiver in motion for BCU, left to right. Now he goes back, snap. Jones bobbles the ball. He's under pressure. He's got to throw it away. That's smart quarterback smart play. Smart move, smart move. Uh, the ball came out, and the ball looked like it was wobbled a little bit as it was hiked to the quarterback, and he took the ball in the, the four. What should yeah. we call the four horsemen? <laughs> they just came diving right in, and uh, he had to get rid of the ball quick, fast, and in a hurry. It looked almost like they, they were going to try and run play, play action. It looked like a play action into a screen play that they were trying to run, but yeah. it, did, it didn't pop up. And the, the snap was just a little bit too high and, and wobbly, as you said. So that's the end of the first quarter. We've hit triple zeros, 13-0 Florida a and but Bethune-Cookman is approaching the red zone there at the 22-yard line. When we come back, it's more Florida classic football right here from the City Beautiful. Stay tuned to the Cat Eye Network.
Second quarter on tap here from Camping World Stadium. It's the Florida Blue Florida Classic for 2022. Michael Torello along with Chris Shaw. It's 13-0 Florida A&M, but the BCU Wildcats have second down and 10 from the 22, or first down and 10, excuse me, from the FAMU 22-yard line and have a perfect chance to get back in this game. I'm truly convinced that Bethune-Cookman and coaching staff is somewhere near us and they've been listening to us <laughs> as we were talking about this game and how we need to turn, how they need to turn things around. As the second quarter gets started, the it whistle is, is blown. I was correct the first time. It's second down and 10 from the FAMU 22. BCU now going left to right. Jones. Shotgun formation. Takes the snap. It's going to keep the ball. He's got all day to look. Now the pressure comes, and he's going to chuck it over the middle. Right and over it the is middle caught and, and taking good. a hit. Did he hang on at the 20-yard line? Bird, yes, he did. What a catch by what Bird. What a catch. Bird comes out of, the, out of the fake handoff and runs a hook and curl route right into the middle, picks up and receives the ball. And but it's third down wasn't and enough. six. So it was only a pickup of four as Jones was scrambling backward to find a man downfield. Once again, that Florida AM defense. Here's the snap. Jones looks. Jones throws towards the corner of the end zone. It is, is it incomplete. Incomplete pass. Oh, beautiful pass. He was looking for Corey Reed, and Reed was just shepherded out of shepherded, excuse me, out of bounds by the Rattlers defender BJ Bowler. And it's gonna be fourth, fourth down. And. Oh, it's an offsides against Florida AM, so that was a free play. I did see it. I did see it. I thought I saw somebody jump, but I, but I sure thought right. maybe it was after the snap because there was no I didn't see a flag. I didn't see a flag or anything. But Again, this is the second time that FAMU has given BCU a reprieve. Remember the running into the kicker penalty right. that gave him a first down of the first quarter. So now from third and six, it's now third and one. What shall we then do? Back in shotgun formation. Bird to the right of the quarterback in a shotgun formation. Now on third and one, you'd think the last time they were in this position, they, they lined everybody up almost goal line style to try and rush for it, but they're still in the spread formation. Jones keeps it himself, runs to the left, cuts up at the first 10, down dive there. forward, first down, BCU at the nine yard line. Nice job by Jones on the read option. Fake handoff to Bird and Jones kept the ball and runs to, runs to his left and gets up just enough to make the first down. Jalen Jones only had 16 rushing yards in the first half, but you know, the sacks take away from that. Right. But he, so he's had a lot more than that rushing the ball. He does pick up a lot of yards with his legs. Must have some strong horse legs, right? <laughs> <laughs> Line back up. First and Shotgun goal. Shotgun formation. First and goal at the nine for BCU. Nine yards to go. One receiver in motion. motion. Now he stops. Hand off to Bird running left. He's got a lane. He's going to go all Touchdown, the way. Touchdown, Bethune Cookman. Touchdown, Maroon and Gold. And BCU is right back in the contest. Hand off to Bird. Bird all the way to the right side of the field, all the way in. And it was wide open. That, oh, motion, yeah. that motion sent everything over. As they went over, he thought the receiver was going to go out and left the whole right side of the field wide open. And something I love is you'll get to know me. As an offensive guy, I love weak side handoffs. Right. <laughs> I love weak side handoffs because if the defense is not prepared for it, as a running back, you've got all, all the that, space in the all world. All the space in with. the world. And there was nobody in a white and orange jersey within like a quarter mile of Kashawn Bird as he crossed the goal line. Here is the kicker, Dylan Mogdom, to attempt the extra point for BCU. Kick Snap is good. up. Kick on the way. It and is good. good. Bethune Cookman is on the board. 13 34 to go in the second quarter. FAMU 13, BCU 7. The Cats are back in the game. We'll be right back on the Cat Eye Network.
Back at Camping World Stadium, the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats on the board, courtesy of a nine-yard rushing touchdown for Kayshawn Bird. And now he has cracked the top 10 all-time in rushing yards in BCU history, 1,800 yards 1800 in his BCU career. Yards. Wait, do you hear that? You hear that band? Oh, yeah. They sound like they're excited. They sound like they're back into this game now. And the Beast, I'm sure all the fans wearing maroon and gold, who we can't see a lot of because they're on our side of the field or right. below us, um, are excited about that too. It is 13 to 7 here with 13.34 left in the first half. Dylan Mogdam set to kick it away left to right for the Wildcats. And we kick the ball off. Ball is kicked off. Oh, it looked like a squib kick. It's a squib kick fielded at the 30 yard line of Florida AM. He's going to run it up to the 40. And just past the 40 is where the Rattlers will begin. That was Jalen Gross, an offensive lineman playing special teams, who actually picked that one up. Who got hands, yeah. right? <laughs> who say that hey. the big men don't have hands? Yeah, and that's why you play those script <laughs> kicks, right? Because the offensive linemen or some of the specialists that play closer up to just tackle, they don't touch the ball very much, and you never know what could happen. It's nothing like seeing a big guy get the ball in his hands oh. and make something shake. <laughs> I don't, you remember the guy, I don't remember his name, but he played for Baylor a couple of years ago, maybe 2015 uh -huh. era. He was like 300 and something pounds. Yeah. And his senior senior day, they gave him the ball and he so running right running, in and he get a touchdown. <laughs> what, am I, what a great college football moment. All right, first and 10 at the 42 yard line, going right to left, slap, snap, to Musa, he's got time to throw. He's gonna throw it into the flat to the 45 and pushed out of bounds right there. I believe that was Rosendo Lewis on the tackle for BCU. A.J. Davis oh, no, received the ball. Yeah, A.J. Davis was there. To receive um, the ball and, and make something shake out of nothing. Omari Hill Robinson also on the tackle for Bethune Crookman. That gain, gain of, of three. So, or oh, actually only gave him two. Gain second two yards, down and eight. Yeah. We line back up. It is still Jalen McLeod in at running back for Florida A&M, and they've bring, they brought the wide receivers in tight. Looks like a running formation. It's two by two plus the tight ends. Ball is snap. Handoff, Hand Robinson off running right. He's going to be wrapped up. And, oh, oh, no, he stays on his feet. How did he stay on his feet in the backfield? He's going to push the pile close to a first down. The pile is still being pushed. Wow, what strength by Jalen McLeod. I thought that Omari Hill Robinson had him dead to right to the backfield. Devontre Hampton was in right there on that tackle. And all the power in that leg game gets kept the running back up and running. Yeah, Mc excellent job on McLeod. And that's why you do leg day in the weight room. That's, for those that's kind absolutely of important. I thought BCU had him wrapped up, but in the end, he gets a nine yard run on a first down into BCU territory at the 48 yard line. Musa now alone in the gun. Two receivers to the right, three receivers to the left. Tight end set left as well. No running back in the backfield. Musa claps twice, takes the snap, it's knee high. He's got time to throw, he goes over the middle, it's caught at the 35 yard line and close to the 30. A nice catch by Darian Oxendine. Oh, excuse me, that was David Mangio. Mangio with the receive. That's his second catch, Mangio. First down, Florida. A&M. Yeah, at the 32-yard line. Mangio had one catch in the first drive of the game for 17 yards. He's got another one right there for about 20-ish yards. So great efficiency We line for back the up, senior. trips to the left. It almost looked like uh, BCU's Ryan Blake was in the neutral zone there. But he backs out, no call. Quarterback goes under the center this time around. Motion left, wide receiver. Two fake, fake handoffs, handoff. Musa looking deep, wide open in the end zone. Touchdown, Florida A&M. Wide open in the end zone for Florida A&M. Xavier Smith with the touchdown for the Rattlers, and that's what that trickery in the backfield gets you, the safety bit on oh. the run, and Smith was wide open. Wide open. For his 11th touchdown of the season. Wide open. What a way to receive the ball. Xavier Smith. Xavier Smith, the reigning SWAC Offensive Player of the Week, had 13 catches, 145 yards, and a touchdown in their win last week at Alabama State. The extra point is up. Ball is snapped, and the kick is good. good. Well, BCU, after getting on the board, Allows a FAMU drive straight down the middle. A couple of nice passes by Musa. A nice catch by Mangio. 
FAMU came back and said, hey, I know you got it, but this is what we're here to do, and this is what we're going to do. And they came back down the field and answered right imme immediately. Officially a 32-yard touchdown from Musa to Smith. We'll take a break, come right back. 11-10 to go, second quarter, 20-7. to FAMU over VCU. This is the Florida Blue Florida Classic on the Cat Eye Network. A 32-yard touchdown pass from Musa to Smith has put the Florida A&M Rattlers up 20-7 on the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats with 11-10 to go in the second quarter here at the Florida Blue Florida Classic at Camping World Stadium. And the offense got it together last they, time for BCU. It looks like we're gonna might have a shootout on our hands here today. It looks like we're gonna have a game on our hands today because if Bethune Cookman can come back out and respond the same way that fam you just responded, it's, you never know what's gonna happen. It's gonna yeah. come down to that last second of the ball or whoever whoever has the ball last in their hand. And I think for Bethune Cookman, if you're the underdogs in this game, which we are, you want some of that chaos, right? You, you do. want it to come down to the very end and, and get the crowd into it, because that's when upsets can happen. That's when the pressure gets to people. And, you know, we've seen strange things happen over the years. Over in college the football. years. <laughs> <laughs> over the years. So many things happen. Uh, you know, you see that, that Hail Mary plays. You see those fantastic Statue of Liberty plays. Yeah. Those but trickery plays. You, you got to play the 59 minutes to get to the one minute at the end of the game where you could potentially win it. Right now, VCU down two scores, but with the way that Jalen Jones is running the ball right now, 61 yards passing, um, six, only 16 yards rushing, but I'm sure he will get more than that. A high kick is bobbled by Deese at the 10 yard line. He takes it to the 20, he's right through the middle at the 30 and he's tripped up at the 35 yard line. Nice return by Darnell Diaz. He looked like he was ready for that one. Yeah. He, he saw an open gap and didn't think he was going to get touched, but they tripped him up right at the 35. And you can see the speed that Diaz has. Because oh. If he gets, like, to the sideline on one of these returns or maybe gets a block up the middle, he could be all the way home. You think I can get down there and run like that? Nah. No, no. Nah. Me neither. <laughs> me neither. Trust me. <laughs> I have a hard enough time keeping up with, uh, with high school kids on right. the soccer field, so I'm not going to keep up with these guys. <laughs> First down and 10 for BCU from the 31 yard line. They go left to right wearing the all gray with silver helmets and yellow numbers. 11.03 in the second quarter. Shotgun formation as the ball get ready to snap. Jones, the snap in the flat to Bird. Lots of work to do. He spins away spin. from one to the 35 and he is nailed at the yeah. 35 at the 36 the flag yard on line. The play. Flag on the play very late in the middle of the field away from the ball in the direction of Lovey Jenkins, the defensive back from uh, Florida AM, and he was walking away shaking his head. So we'll see what this penalty is. Mm, could have been a, a late hit on the quarterback? Could be, could be. It's in that general vicinity. But again, Kashawn Bird just puts his per plant in the front of the ground. Personal foul face man. On, oh, on Bethune Cookman. So the Cookman. First, first penalty of the day for the Wildcats is a costly one. It takes a five yard reception 
away from Kishan Burton. A, a, a nifty five yard reception as well because he had that nice spin move. He just stuck his foot on the ground, good. made the defender look silly and picked up five, but the, it's a 10 yard loss the, for BCU. The ball was snapped and as Bird came out in the flats in the backfield, um, the quarterback throws Bird the ball and Bird hits a, a nice little spin move and gets up the field, but that that face mask holding penalty is going to be a factor. All right, now first down and 20 at the 21-yard line. Whistle and a stoppage of play from the official. I think it was a substitution thing for Florida A&M as there was a guy running on late. Now we'll spot the ball down and go. Overload to the left. Three receivers that way. Motion in the backfield. Jones, time to slip it out to Bird, and it's off his hands, and it hits the turf. Third down, or second down, and 20. 20 to seven right now in the second quarter with 10 minutes and 30 seconds left to go in this second quarter. What is Bethune Cookman going to do? I think I want to see them take a shot, right? Get somebody on a go route, get somebody a receiver 1v1. You've got Everett out there. You've got other receivers that can make things happen uh, like Marcus Riley, like Daryl Powell and see what they can do because the ball really hasn't gone to them much today. It's been mostly about the short plays. Ball to snap, motion. Jones under pressure, screen. has to screen it to Bird. Bird, Bird with stays spin. on his feet, spins, and he only gets back to the line of scrimmage and maybe gains one more at the 22-yard line. That's a lot of short plays that Bethune Cookman is throwing out, and you're absolutely right. Maybe if we can just get down, but we got to Bethune Cookman got to be able to hold that line uh, because this front four is just coming in, just the front four. Yeah. We're not talking about extra men coming in. It's just the front four, how FAMU is coming in. It Justice, uh, Justin Cooks, excuse me, is leading that defensive line well for Florida A&M as the nose tackle. Yeah, he's pretty solid. <laughs> he's pretty solid. But now he's going to have to make something happen. Third and 19. Five receivers out for Bethune Cookman. Bird motions back to the backfield, maybe just to give Jones some extra protection. And a timeout, oh. maybe? Fly whistle and a stoppage of play at the snap. Delay of game. Oh, they're going to push him back five more yards. And it's going to be third down and 24. Penalties is what's going to hurt Bethune Cookman in this game. And they were previously unpenalized throughout the first quarter and a half. Right. They had a very first quarter, a great first quarter without any penalties, just minor mistakes. And now third and a country mile. They got to get all the way to the 41 yard line. Ball spotted at the 17. Ball is snapped. Jones, Jones takes off on a draw, and he right. is not going to get very far. Run down to the 22 yard line. He got the penalty yards back from the delay of game, but not a whole lot more. And out comes the punting unit for the Wildcats for the second time today. Ben Lennon uh, was a recipient of a roughing the kicker penalty the first time he was out to punt, punting from the back of his own end zone. But he's got to get a better kick away than that because the first kick only went about 440 yards. We got to get a got to get a good kick in uh, this time around to push the Rattlers back into their own territory. It is Jamari Jamari Shared returning for Florida A&M. He's got his feet on the 43-yard line of FAMU. As we get ready for the ball to be snapped, the ball is snapped, and another whistle. I believe this is another delay of game. Second delay of game, and Terry Sims just came onto the field, and he is hot at his players. So they'll push the ball back the, to the... They haven't updated the scoreboard yet. Well, the ball, either way it goes, the kicker is now in the end zone. And his own end zone getting ready to kick this ball out. They put the ball on the 14-yard line. So he's right at the end zone. Yeah, he's on the two-yard line is. This could be dangerous. Ben Lennon. They're not going to pressure the punt. Lennon gets it away. It's high, arcing end over end. Going to land at about midfield. Fair catch called for and taken. Oh, no, it's not a fair catch. But it's pushed out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Actually, it was a fair catch. It's a fair so, catch. It was yeah. a fair catch. Every uh, time you he, waved your hand. He got up and went and, and ran. So I was like, wait a minute. Did he yeah. call for a He did call for a fair catch. But you can, ne you can never go. You can always be on the safe side. And the defense did exactly what they needed to do to at least just put hands on them to stop them. This Florida A&M Rattlers team, 8-2. and two, Their only losses are to North Carolina 
obviously, and Jackson State, at the very beginning of the season, they've rattled off eight straight wins. They've been on a mission. They've been on a run, and they've been running ever since that Jackson State game that they lost. And now with the Celebration Bowl kind of out of reach because Jackson State kind of dominates the, the SWAC East, they're looking to the FCS playoffs. They've got a chance. They're ranked number 24 in the uh, FCS stats poll. The top 24 teams make it in, so... And they've also submitted a bid to the NCAA to host a first-round game should they get in. So it could be coming to Tallahassee. Yeah, uh, it's going to be great, and it's always a, a great point to see uh, HBCU in the FCS bowl game. They did make the playoffs last year, lost to Southeastern Louisiana 38-14, to although that was a C-Law team that had one of the better offenses in right. the FCS and averaged, I think, something 50-something points a game. They raced they will just everybody. What do you expect? What, yeah. do you, what, do, what, do you, what can you do when you got someone like that offensively uh, just constantly coming in and going in and going in? But, so. but you, you said it yourself, right? The, the HBUCUs underrepresented at the FCS playoff level because of the Celebration Bowl taking their top two teams, the best in the SWAC and the best in the MEAC, and playing them in a bowl game at the end of the year. And there has been conversation about, well, why don't we send our best teams to the FCS playoffs? Why don't we let them compete for a national championship? Well, you know, it's, it's always great to have your own your own in an HBCU ramification to have a, nice, a national championship that you can call, but it is also even better and great to have that team to go to the FCS Bowl and, and get in those bowl games and let's win something and bring something back home, bring one of those uh, real national titles back home. First and 10 for FAMU at the 41-yard line. They go right to left wearing all white, trimmed in orange and green. New running back is A.J. Davis. He's going to hand the, get the ball and a handoff stretch play to the right. He's going to dance through, and he's going to be tackled after a gain of about six yards right at the 45-yard line. And I'm trying to see who made the tackle there for BCU. It looks like it was Eddie Walls. It looked like tackle. Eddie Walls that made the tackle, but it was so many down there. Mm -hmm. But I think Eddie Walls was the first one to touch. Officially gave him five yards on the run. So they'll spot the ball at the 46-yard line. The ball Moose to the snap. snap. Davis, Davis trying to get the ball cut back. He's Bob gonna be, and Weave. He's going to be dragged down from behind by Eddie Walls again. Oh, no, Devin Stubbs was first to that. Walls was also in, the, in there on the tackle. Brings up third down and three at the 48. And BCU would, this would be a huge boost for BCU if they could get off the field here, force a three and out. It would be great. Push them back and re let the offense come back out here and put their magic to the test. Two receivers right, two receivers left. They're on the right hash with a tight end set to the right. And I believe this is a free play as a BCU defender jumped off sides. The pass goes to the far side. It's caught by a sliding receiver for Florida A&M, Xavier Smith, on the catch. And I think they'll move the chains. On yeah, they're going to decline this yeah. penalty and move the chains into BCU territory. Yeah, uh, good fake. Good hand, hand clap fake in the shotgun formation. It looks as if he clapped the hands, but as a defender on the defensive line, your job is to always watch the ball. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to the watch the ball because when that ball moves is when you move. And that's, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. So the defensive line got to watch that ball and make sure that that ball is moving uh, before they make those moves going over the line of scrimmage. First down. 6.55 and counting to go in the first half. Florida a &M using all the time on the play clock. They've got a 20 to seven lead here in the Florida Classic. They're on the BCU uh, 45 yard line. The snap to Musa. He looks, oh, he gets ripped down, the ball, ball comes out. Fumble. The ball comes out of the 40 yard line. It looks like the Wildcats have it. It looks like the Wildcats have it. There was a, I couldn't see who it was, but somebody came off the edge and ripped the ball out of Musa's hands. It looked like the DB just came in out of nowhere and just knocked the ball out of Musa's hand and the fumble and did Bethune Cookman receive the ball? I'm not sure who they're giving the ball to. It looks like the Florida a and offense is staying on the field. So the Rattlers did maintain possession. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Let's see what the replay says and what the replay does. I don't think they showed a replay, or I didn't catch it on the Jumbotron here. But the Rattlers offense is back out of the field, and I believe the man that ripped the ball out was Judas McKenzie, who got back to the quarterback. Oh, no, Ja'Cory uh, Jordan was on the sack for BCU. Shotgun. Handoff, hand swing off. to the right, and he's ripped down and in the backfield. 
They brought Xavier across the field and he was torn down by the ankles. Joshua throwing him on the stop in the backfield. And now it's- What a great stop. Third down and, f I don't know where it is. Third down and a, a long way. They are on their own 37 and they gotta get to the BCU 37. So Ooh, exactly- that's a, long, that's a long field. Exactly. The stat sheet says second and 26. Bethune-Cookman takes their second timeout of the half. It's well, going to be... That's their first timeout of the half. No, uh, oh, right, the first, first timeout time of the took, half. Fam, you took, fam, the, you first took the first one earlier. So it's third down and 20 28 to go. Eight when we come back. Can VCU defense get off the field? Find out next. This is the Florida Blue, Florida Classic on the Cat Eye Network. Third down and 20 or th uh, 29 to go here for Florida AM. They have the ball at their own 37 yard line. They've got to get the ball to the Bethune Cookman 34 yard line. And his defense is looking like they're ready to make some noise as the crowd is getting ready to get excited because I guess they're getting ready for the ex most exciting time is the halftime show, I guess. Yeah, the bands are going to be on the field. We're going to enjoy that. The ball Lusa. is snapped. Time running out. He steps up in the pocket. He's going to go down. He's, He's going to go down. A flag, flag comes is in. On the play. A flag comes in as Musa is dragged down at the 43 yard line. Or Darnell the 30, 37 yard line. Darnell D's got there in combination with Mason Hall. It's a holding against FAMU, declined by BCU, and it's going to be fourth down for the Rattlers. What a hold here by BCU. The last three plays, the Strip sack that lost about 20 yards, the tackle of the backfield on the jet sweep, and now a sack. And it looks like everything is going Bethune-Cookman's way. So now let's see what Bethune-Cookman is going to do offensively if they receive this ball and go back for it because third and 29 was, is a long way to travel. <laughs> <laughs> that means you need to pack your bags and get and in the car and we, go. We got to see if the defensive energy that they've brought this series can translate to the offense. This is Justice Tuggle back to receive the punt. Jose Romo Martinez is out there to punt for the Rattlers. He's gonna punt it away from about his own 30 yard line. It's a low spiraling punt. It's a really nice punt. It bounces at the 15 yard line and is gonna be downed right there by the Rattlers. So the food Cookman backed up to their own 15 yard line and their offense has been a little bit- A little shaky, a little, shaky. A little shaky, but they're, they're coming to 445 left to go in the second quarter before halftime come up and it looks as if the bands have both cleared the stands as they're getting ready to set up for this halftime show. 
But before the halftime show even kick in, we got to see what this offense is going to produce to get down the field and at least get on the scoring board before halftime. I think if they get on the scoring board before the halftime, it'll be a great game second half. First and 10 from the 15 going left to right. Jones in the gun. Bird there, shot uh, sidecar right. Now he transitions to the left. Three receivers out there to the left as well. This defensive front for Florida AM has been solid all day. Hand off the bird. He goes nowhere. Excellent tackle. Bird to stop right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, excellent tackle right at the point by Dalen Hall. No, uh, Jan Jackson for Florida AM. He was right there uh, stopping. That's what, guess what the big guys, the defensive line do? They plug the holes and they stop the holes doing they, their job. They give him a loss of one, second down and 11 from the 14 yard line. Two receivers on each side of the field. And they're stacked up close to the offensive line. Jones the snap. He's got time to throw. He looks down the field. He's got Everett out there. What a one-handed one catch. catch at the 30-yard wow. line. Yes, it First is. First down for Thune Cookman University. Oh, wow. Kamari Everett, show off the gloves, What my a friend. hand. What a catch. I'm just looking over at the, the scoreboard to see the replay. Nice throw by Jones. Put it back shoulder. Just stuck up the arm he, right there and hold it in with one hand. He just stuck his arm up and said, hey, I'm here. Give it to me. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> First down, but Thune Cookman up at the... 32 yard line. Same formation line back up. Shotgun formation, yeah. two receivers on the side. Tight was, formation, ball is snapped. That was an 18 yard pass to Everett Jones, scrambling back near the 20. He still scrambles. He's got to get the ball out there. He He's gets still away running. with one. He does pitch the ball to the sideline, and a flag, and the flag comes, comes, in comes in. Very late. That's not going to be intentional grounding because he's out of the pocket. I'm not sure what that flag is going to be. A second one now comes in. Wow. So Jones the, Jones, Jones backed runs, up. Backs up rolled. and comes out and didn't even make the line of scrimmage. He's still in still in, in line so he can throw the ball out. And he, he threw the ball into the bench, got the ball away. I hear clapping coming from the BCU fans here on the near sideline. Could it be uh, maybe a late hit or something? We're going to see what the referee says. The referee today is w YN Myers. Oh, blind side blind block, on, block on BCU. And once again, the Wildcats struggling to get out of their own way in this second quarter <sighs> after going penalty free in the first quarter. Penalties is what's going to cause this game to, to hurt Bethune Cookman University. Three minutes and 20 seconds left to go in the second quarter. The score is FAMU 20, Bethune Cookman 7. And as we back the ball up, two times out apiece for both teams. It's, it's going to be interesting where they spot the ball here. Got to see something. As Bethune the, has got to do something. Got to get out of these penalty situations. The referees are still talking about it. They're going to spot the ball all the way back at the 14-yard 14 14 line. 14-yard line. Wow. So that is a... 5, 10, 15, 20-yard penalty. Oh, because it's a 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. From the, from the spot of the foul. And he was five yards in the backfield. Yeah. So we're back in shotgun formation. Bethune is ready to receive the ball. Overload left. Three receivers to the left. So it's still first down, but it's first and 24 from their own 14-yard line. Running back shifts over from the right side to the left side of the field. Fake, Fake the handoff, hand the bird over the middle, right over the middle. catch. The oh, ball comes out, incomplete, incomplete pass. pass. Uh, Jones was looking for Jamon Eford. He's not an offensive player. What? Daryl Powell. Daryl Powell, yeah, He was looking me. for Daryl Powell, and it slipped right through Daryl Powell's hand, Jr., who thought he had the ball and just went right through. And Jones is putting the ball on a line. He's got good arm strength. Yeah, he's putting the ball right there. He's putting. It looked like he's every... Every pass that he's thrown has been on the money. And it's there's been, I think, three or four drops today by Bethune-Cookman that has really hurt them. Five penalties for 35 yards now Second for the Wildcats. Second and 27 to go, 248 all, to go. Yeah, 35 yards of penalties all in this second quarter. Second and a mile. Jones underneath, complete at the 20-yard line. Trying to get to the 25 is the receiver, Ryan Blake. No, excuse me, Khalil Overton. And they will spot the ball at the 26-yard line. So it is third down and 20, uh, 15. Third down and 15. 
I know it's. This is tough. This is tough. But it's not impossible. It's not. Because we've seen Everett go out there and make big catches for 15, 16, 17 yards. I think we're going to have to look for him again. Great one-handed catches. Ball is snap. Receivers two by two. Jones has to roll out. He's going to be dragged and down back down. at the 16-yard line. Nice play by Florida A&M's Johnny Chaney Jr., the linebacker from Orlando, came in and wrestled him down in the backfield. And it's going to be a three and out. Oh, no, it's not a three and out because they got one first down, but still an empty drive for Bethune Cookman. And now. That was number, uh, Anthony Dunn. Johnny Anthony Dunn, number 53. Is that who that was? I thought it was. Oh, wow. Somebody else. It might have been Anthony Dunn. He, I think he's a true freshman. Yeah. Florida AM calls a timeout. Two minutes and three seconds left to go in the first half. Florida AM calls a timeout to give their offense a little bit more time. This is this is gonna be intriguing because this is this a make or break uh, going into halftime. Uh, you, you don't have the ball anymore in your hand. Fam you are they gonna try to come down the field and score or is fam you just gonna try to run the clock as much as they can and try to keep it keep it a close competitive game. I think that fam is gonna go for the throat. I think they're gonna think try they're gonna and go? throw deep down the field. We haven't seen that play action again to try and hit Smith like they did on that touch on the touchdown but previously so I think maybe you'll see FAMU be aggressive here, but the punt from Ben Lennon is going to have to get off. Remember the we got to we got to get this punt out. We got to get this punt back and get the team back into their own end zone. Lennon at least close to their own their own end zone. Lennon punting again from the one yard line. Third time in the game that he's punted from this spot. The senior from Australia. Again, no, snap. no pressure on the punt. Lennon gets it away. That's a better, better punt. Better punt, good punt. Fair, fair catch, catch called for and taken at the 35-yard line. So Florida a and will start there. With one minute and 52 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Still waiting to see if there'll be a timeout or we'll keep going. It looks like we'll keep going as the BCU defense takes the field. And the Wildcats defense played a lot better on that last series. They did. They played a lot better on the last series that they played, uh, stopping and running and putting pressure on the quarterback and playing, playing football. Playing football. You're getting your front four to push the ball back, and you're getting extra help with everybody else coming in. So if they can do this again and do three and out, it will be great, and they can probably get the ball back before halftime and make something shake. Musa, 6 of 6 for 86 yards and a touchdown. That's a quarterback rating of 275. That's very high. Three to the left, one to the right. Musa takes snap. the snap over the middle, wide pass, open on across to the 40, the 45, wrestled out of bounds at the 47-yard line. That is David Mangio again. He's just he's just all over Bethune Cookman. He's everywhere. You can't keep your eye off of him. You have to watch him to see what he's going to do and where he's going to be. Because every time he come across that field in those flat routes or those post routes, he's wide open. He did get out of bounds, 144 to go. Ball spotted on the 48-yard line of Florida AM. and remember, remember, they go right to left in the second quarter. Musa, time to throw over the middle. A oh. diving deflection by the BCU defensive back. Devontae Hampton? Yep, Devontae Hampton was there, and he knocked that one down. Right there in the middle. Uh, you know, it was trying to be one of those, uh, those post routes almost, and the defender was right there in place to at least knock the ball out. He didn't get, catch it, but he tipped it out so no one can receive the ball. So second and 10, Bethune-Cookman Bethune defense is out. 138 to go. FAMU is lined up. Shotgun formation. Motion right. That's Smith coming in motion. Musa, the snap. He's pressured. He throws the ball into open space, and it hits the turf as he was being pressured from all sides by the BCU front four. That, that wall collapsed in on him. That is something about that front four. When your wall collapsed in on you as a quarterback, it throws your mindset off, and you got to do whatever you can to get that ball out of your hand or you take the sack. I've really enjoyed how defensive end Mason Hall has played today for Bethune Cookman. Yes. He's anchoring the right-hand side of that defense. And he's gotten the pressure on Musa a couple of times in this quarter. Third yes. down and 10 now from the 48-yard line. 
We're it's, lining back up in shotgun formation. Tight wide receivers in tight. Two on each side. Snap to Musa. He's got time. Now the pocket collapses. He throws over the middle of the field. He's got a receiver at the 35 at the 30-yard line. And that's Smith again. Xavier Smith down to wide. the 25-yard line, and he was wide open. Florida a and brings the pace now as they are out of timeouts in this first half and with only 1.18 left to go. Ball is snapped. Musa looking middle incomplete. He overthrew his intended receiver. I guess they got a miscommunication on that play. Oh, the receivers started coming in, and Musa is throwing the ball out in the out route. He was looking for Mangio across the middle, and he just threw it way over his head. And so now the clock stops, 1.12 to go. I was mistaken. I thought Femi didn't have a timeout left. They have they one, one more, left. One more timeout to go. So they can stop the clock here. Two more timeout for Bethune-Cookman University. Rattlers trying to turn the screws before the end of the half, up 20-7 to seven with a minute 12 to go. They've got the ball on the 24-yard line of BCU. Two backs in the backfield. Power eye formation, motion left. Ball is snap. They're going to swing past to Smith. Oh. They're looking for the double pass. Throw back, Throw back to, to the Musa. quarterback. Musa at the 30. Musa at the 20. At the 10. And it's a Philly special wow. for the Florida a and Rattlers as Musa scores a receiving touchdown. Wow. Musa throws the ball to the flats and the running back. looked like a screen play. And the running back throws it back to Musa on the right side of the field. Wide open. Run down the field. Great blocking scheme from FAMU. Blocking everybody in their path. And a touchdown pass for Xavier Smith on this season. Wow, what a play. Yeah, that was, that was wild. They, they broke out the trickery. And if you're going to do it, the rivalry game is the place to do so. Lined up for the extra point. Extra point is up. And the kick is good. So 101 to go in the first half and it's 27 to seven, Florida a and There was a little spark of hope at the beginning of the quarter for, for Bethune-Cookman, but the Rattlers have pounced in, this, in the second half of this second quarter and have scored two touchdowns to make it a 20 point lead. As so, you look in the stands, you can see a combination of maroon and gold and orange and green, and they sit in summer everywhere, but it is a lot of orange that I'm seeing too. Well, yeah, well, because they're on the far uh, side yeah, from where we what, see. So I can't, we can't the, see underneath The Bethune-Cookman fans are underneath us. We can't really see them. That is the, so I have an interesting stat. That is Xavier Smith's second pass attempt of the year. Really? His first one was intercepted. His second one <laughs> went for a touchdown. <laughs> and I take it the second one was with Bethune-Cookman, right? <laughs> yep, that was what you just saw right there. Florida a 27 to seven the lead. All season long, Bethune, -Cook Bethune Cookman and has been dealing with adversity, back being against the wall, dealing with hurricanes back to back uh, that come in, keeping them on the road for almost a month, uh, being out at trying to figure out places to play, practice. It's been a lot for Bethune, and, and they've been faced with adversity. And they've practiced at Jackson State recently with Nicole, and then yeah, you're right on Ian. They they were out of out of it for a month, and traveling and living out of hotels, and I got a quote from uh, from coach at least I thought I did I'll f maybe find it at halftime the ball is kicked off and it is back Diaz takes it Diaz at the 5 at the 15 20 tries to burst through but is tripped up near the 24 yard line so that's where the Wildcats will have it 55 seconds left to go let's see if Bethune Cookman can make a little bit of a spark before halftime they gotta do something they have they're gonna have to do something to keep everybody and enjoy it keep the hopes going keep the momentum going going into halftime. So they're going to have to come out in this in this series right here and make something happen. Get down the field, run the ball, and make it into the end zone. They got to get into the end zone. You got to get – Bethune-Cookman has got to get on the scoreboard. They've only gotten one touring play, obviously, today. That was the nine-yard rush by Bird earlier in the, in the uh, second quarter. Other than that, it's been mostly orange and green dominant. Jones takes ball the snap. snap. Divine roll to the right. He throws to the sideline, and it's oh, right and it, through the hands of Caleb Sutherland. No, check that. Uh, Jonathan Thomas, and incomplete. And that's the third or fourth time on a screen or a route to the flat that the receivers have just the, dropped the ball. It's just going right through like Casper the Friendly Ghost. Like <laughs> you can't see anything. It's just going right through. I'm sure Jalen Jones uh, and 
He's a little bit frustrated with his receivers right now. I think you got to go try and find number one, Kamari Everett. You got to find someone. We got to get down. The, they got to get down the field and fly. But you got that O line is going to have to hold up. Oh, oh and another mo mo that's movement, and you could see immediately that um, Jalen Jackson, the left tackle, the left tackle. You can see it clearly. Oh no! Check that. Sixty-two, not eighty-two. Um, Kyler Edwards, the left tackle, he, he knew immediately, put his hands on his helmet yeah. and went, oh, no. So that moves him back five second and 15, 49 seconds left to go. A sixth penalty on the Wildcats in this quarter. Ball Three by snap. one, the receivers. Jones has time. Now the pressure collapses. He rolls out to his right. He pitches it underneath. That pass is made, uh, caught by a sliding Jonathan Thomas near the original first down marker. So they get the penalty yards back, you gotta, but it is third and nine. They're going to have to move here. You're going to have to move. You can't wait. You can't wait. Clock is running. You got two timeouts left going into the halftime if you really want to get on the scoreboard. Third and nine to go. I think if they if they really want to try and get on the board, they're going to take a shot here with 18 seconds. If not, I think it might just be a draw or a run the bird to run, run out the rest of the clock. 13 seconds left. Clock running. Ball is snapped. Jones steps up in the pocket. He's going to be dragged down from behind by Kamari Stevens. And that will end the first half. And that's mostly been how it's been for the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. The defense for Florida a and has brought the game. And the offense has done enough. The Rattlers lead 27-7 at the break here at Camping World Stadium. This is going to be the. This is going to be a factor right here with fam. If Bethune Cookman can come back in the second half and turn things around, and it's going to be up to head coach Terry Sims, right? I see a lot of down heads on the uh, on the VCU sideline. I, I. So. Oh, hold on. The first half is not over because they're saying Florida A&M called a timeout right at the end of the clock. They put three, three seconds, seconds back and are going to force five Bethune, seconds back on the clock. Well, five seconds, and they're going to force Bethune-Cookman to punt. It, that was a wow. really late call. The FAMU ban was already coming onto the field. They were They were moving right onto the field, ready to go. <laughs> and they're having to send them back. Called a flashback with the ban coming onto the field before <laughs> the end of the game, and a, uh, the wide receiver running to the oh, end yeah, zone. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's the, the, the old big Cal game. Right. A legendary, legendary yeah. moment, but not here, not right now. We're not gonna. What's not gonna happen here? <laughs> not in 2022. The band is back <laughs> off the field, and Ben Lennon is unfortunately at his own three-yard line again to try and punt this ball away. He gets the kick off. It hangs high in the air. It is caught at the 40-yard line, breaking two tackles at the 40 to the 45, running near side of the 50, and pushed out of bounds at the BCU 40-yard line is Jamari Sharid. He looked like he had a lane, but he couldn't quite get there. Now it will be the end of the first half as the team's head to the locker room. Now the band's getting ready to come out, and uh, we shall see what take place at the second half of this game. So All right. Cookman is going to have to do something. Yep, They're going to have to do something. It is 27-7, Florida A&M over Bethune-Cookman at the end of the first half. Chris and I will take a 15-minute break. Enjoy the bands. Enjoy the pageantry. We'll be back for the second half. This is the Cat Eye Network's production of the Florida Blue Florida Classic.
it's no secret, the reason why you're all here. Please welcome the incomparable, magnificent, fantastic, Florida is the marching band. The theme of today's halftime pageant, there's only one.
10.
Live from Camping World Stadium in Orlando, Florida, it's the Florida Blue Florida Classic for 2022. The Bethune-Cookman Wildcats trail the Florida a and Rattlers 27-7 as we get set to start the second quarter of action. Hello and a very warm welcome back to the broadcast booth. My name is Michael Torello. Chris Shaw is alongside me in commentary. Chris, the Cats were in it for a while in the first half, and then the penalties combined with the turnovers kind of the, let the game slip away from them a little bit, but they still got a half to play. Well, it was the penalties that hurt, and the penalties always hurt any any team in any factorization. So coming into the second half, Bethune Cookman have for years been known as a second half team to come back in the second half and to do different to do things differently. Well, to get there, they're going to have to get their offense moving. Uh, only 98 yards passing the first half from Jalen Jones as opposed to 127 from Jeremy Musa, the Rattlers quarterback. The Rattlers do get the ball to start the second half. They wear the white helmets, white jerseys, white pants with orange and green trim. Bethune Cookman in the silver helmets, uh, gray or anthracite jerseys, gray pants, gold numbers, maroon trim, gold names across the back. Dylan Mogdom gets set to kick this ball off of Bethune Cookman right to left across your screen. As 50,000 people about have uh, made their way into the Citrus Bowl or old Citrus Bowl, Camping World Camping Stadium, World Stadium yeah. to, to watch this annual matchup between the two premier HBCU schools in the state of Florida. So it seemed like the temperature dropping and the balls are getting ready to hopefully don't drop this second <laughs> half around, right? That's a short kickoff from Mogdom. It's going to go out of bounds, so illegal kick. So... At the, I believe the 45-yard line, line is where Florida a and will start. It looked like he almost put his toe on the ball. Right on the of, ball instead of, instead of hitting it clean. Right. So tough start for Bethune-Cookman, but we did see the defense for BCU play well in flashes in the first half when they were able to get pressure on jo uh, Jeremy Musa and force him to move in the pocket, force him to sack. He's not very mobile, so if you can collapse those defensive ends in, you've got a chance. And that's what's going to have to happen this, this second half around for the defensive side to push the ball back and to push the deep, the O-line back and for them to collapse in on the quarterback to crash the quarterback and sack the quarterback a couple of times in this half in order to get that ball turned back over to their end. First down, Florida A&M. They will start at their own 37-yard line going left to right in this first half. Musa, 8 of 11, 127 yards. At one point, he was 7 for 7 in that first half. Fantastic efficiency. He's in the gun, running back, sidecar right, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Snap to Musa. He's got time. He throws in the flat to the running back, Jalen McLeod, and McLeod is pushed out of bounds at the 41-yard line, gain of five. I believe that was Rosendo Lewis who pushed him out of bounds. Yeah, Rosendo Lewis with the push out to push him on the outside. Um, nice shot to receive starting the second half. Six yards to go. And that's a wrinkle we haven't seen from Florida a and yet in the ball game. The little wide receiver screen out there to the far side. Three receivers on the right-hand side. They're going to hand the ball off to up the middle and diving through. Close to the first down is McLeod. He's going to be about three yards short. He put his knee down Rosendo at the... Lewis. Yeah, Rosendo Lewis again on the tackle. He put his knee down at the 44-yard line. So make it third down and three. So he, the defense is coming out to play, but FAMU is going to do their best to try to march down this field and probably eat up as much clock as they can in this third quarter. They are up 27-7, to 14-20 to go in the third quarter. Just starting the second half festivities here. A rollout and a flag, flag on, the play, on the play. And through the hands of the receiver on the near side. Would have been a first down if he had connected with Xavier Smith, but Musa sees the ball go off of his hands. There is a flag. We'll see what this flag is. It is in the vicinity of holding. So illegal motion. Illegal motion on the offense. That's a call you don't see very often. You don't hear that often. No. But it is still third down. They're going to go five yards back. So instead of third down and three, it'll be third down yeah, and that's, eight. That's rare that you hear that type of call uh, coming from the offense side of the ball. Uh, everybody knows their position and know their plays and what they're supposed to do. And we've, we've seen a couple of interesting offensive penalties. We had, what, the, the illegal illegal block on uh -huh. BCU in the first half. Don't see a blindside block. Don't a see blindside that called. block. Don't see that called very often. And then illegal shift on the offense as well. So now they'll sit up at the 41-yard line going left to right, trying to get to the 40, 
47. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Third down and eight to go. Musa in the gun with McLeod, shotgun to the uh, sidecar left. One receiver goes in motion left to right, that's Smith. Fakes the handoff. Musa looking down the field to one-on-one -on -one coverage, and it is incomplete. Excellent job by Omari Hill Robinson, one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. One-on-one, -on -one, great way to play defense. Kept the defender on the outside of him. That way he can keep his hand on the inside of the ball in case the ball come in and knock it down, which is what he did. And this is huge for Bethune-Cookman, grabbing that three and out early in the second half, get some momentum. Maybe your offense feeds off that a little bit, comes out slinging. They did early in the first half, too, before that interception on the first drive took it away from them. This is what the defense needed to do coming into this second half of the game. Uh, coming in, three and out, put the offense back on the field. Let's get down the field and score. Punting for the first time today is Chris Fadul, the graduate student. The punt is almost blocked. It does get away. It's an excellent punt. Fair catch called for and taken by the Wildcats just shy of the 15-yard line. So field position battle has definitely been won by the Rattlers today with these excellent punts. I was mistaken. That's the second punt for Fadul. Yep, that was his second punt for the game. Uh, he hadn't seen a lot of action because... Offensively, they've, fam, you have been running the ball. Listen, they've if been you, down the field throwing the ball. If you're a punter, you want to stay on the sidelines as much as possible. You know, I don't want, I don't want to see the field because that means my offense is doing its job and moving down the field. And if if anybody's kicking it to the kicker and not me, right. But you know, sometimes you just gotta keep your blood running warm, right? The Cookman offense back on the field. Jalen Jones in the shotgun. Bird sidecar to the right. Three receivers left. Single right, handoff, Bird up the middle, trying to make a man miss. He shakes off one to the 15, makes a man miss to the outside. Good gets to the back. 20, gets a block 25, and out of bounds near the 30-yard line. Nice job by Bird. Bird on the carry, and he did a nice cutback. Oh, my Lord. I've never, I haven't seen a cutback like that since, what, Deion Sanders? <laughs> no, <laughs> I, don't Sanders. Know, I, don't, I don't know. Since Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders. There Barry we Sanders. go, there we go. I was talking to our SID Bryce Wojnowski at the at halftime, and he was telling me how he loves Bird's shiftness. He's, he has an ability to make people miss that is almost unparalleled in the swag. Jones in the pocket, design quarterback run to the right, looking for a block, won't get it. He's going to be buried at the 31-yard line. Anthony Dunn, number 53 for FAMU, on the stop along with AJ, or excuse me, um, Lovey Jenkins on the stop there for the Rattlers as well. As you can hear that band rumbling on the side over there oh, for FAMU, the, they, the, they sound a little excited. I hope I hope you could hear the bands through the microphone at halftime as well as we could hear up in the booth because it's the best part of the game, man. <laughs> College football, it's all about the tradition. It's all about the bands, the pageantry. Jones. Handoff Bird, he's got a lane to the 45, cut back, or 35, uh. excuse me, cut back, almost gets him free, but the strong arms of the defender brought him down. I believe that was... Lovey Jenkins again. Lovey Jenkins again, just stuck out that left arm and stopped his momentum. The gap was wide open for him to run through. Uh, Lovey Jenkins stepped up right on time just to catch him before he could break away. They uh. do spot the ball at the 38, which is good enough for a first down, barely, for BCU. First and 10 for their own 48, going right to left. They've run the ball a little bit more early on in this second half than they did in the first, utilizing Keyshawn Bird. And that's going to be a key factor. That's going to be a key factor. You want to get back into this game, run them out, run them tired. Snap. Jones in the flat quick hitter. That's caught at the 50-yard line, diving forward into Rattler territory for a first down and more. Nice catch. Khalil Overton, the other tight end. Moving the chains for the Wildcats on a 12-yard pickup. Now this looks like Wildcat football. For this them. is very similar to what we saw in the first drive in the in the opening half too. Patient, Jones is patient in the pocket. They're giving him a window to throw the ball. He's hitting his receivers on quick slants, but they've sprinkled it a little bit of that run. It had to, you got to put the run game in to, to throw it off every now and then before you get the passing game going. First and 10 for the 49. Screen to Overton. Overton at the 45. Overton dragged down to the 40. Still moving the pile inside the 40-yard line. Let's see where they spot it. They spot it at the 39-yard line. Another first down for Bethune-Cookman. Zari Riley on the stop for FAMU. First down, Bethune-Cookman University. They've just been picking up these 9, 10, 11-yard gains in this on this drive, three receivers out to the right. 
Nobody to the left, but the tight end is there. Jones in the shotgun again against the four-man front with two linebackers. Jones changes the play at the line. Looks like Fam, you might try to dial up some heat here. Hand off Bird, weak side left. Uses a stiff arm and is pushed out of bounds at the 40-yard line, no gain. A flag does come off on play. out as there's a Bethune-Cookman helmet laying on the turf. It belongs to Kamari Everett. And you gotta think that there may be a face mask coming the way of Florida A&M. That was again away from the ball, so I didn't see it. They are gonna call yep. face mask on Florida A&M, so. That moves the chains for Bethune-Cookman once again. And because his helmet came off, the college rule, Khalil Averett has to come off the field for a play. Safety protocols, with so much going on in, in, the league, in the game of football, you wanna make sure that all players are safe from any situation. So with their top receiver out, they may try and go conservative here on first and 10. They spot the ball at the FAMU 25 yard line. Jones with three receivers to aim for. Two to the right, one to the left. And Bird to the backfield. Snap is low. Under pressure. Throw out into the flat. That's actually not Bird. That's Terry Lindsay, the fullback. He makes a diving catch and falls forward. It's a gain of only one, but it is a gain. It's a gain. So and we got positive yards coming in on the offensive side for Bethune Cookman University. Now it's just marching into the red zone and then getting into the end zone. And that was a The referee is speaking here. Oh, they're yelling at the band. The band can't play when the offense is set. So, also, that's what that's what that announcement was. So yes. the, the band is playing and, all, and the offense is running. At, coming from a school that I went to in James Madison where the band is a big part of the game day, I, we got that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and nine from the 24-yard line. Jones sends one receiver in motion. He takes the snap. He hands it off to Lindsey. Lindsey shifting the backfield. He breaks free to the 20, and he gets upended at the 18-yard line. That was a crunching tackle up the middle by Javis Morgan from Florida A&M. He stepped up right on time because if he didn't, Lindsey was going to be wide open into the end zone. An excellent patience by Lindsey because he waited in the backfield, he waited for his blocks to develop, and then he took off with a little bit of shiftiness, and you're right, that's potentially a touchdown-saving right. tackle that from Morgan. Great eye as a running back to wait and give it time to develop to run into the end zone. We got a little bit of an injured player on Bethune-Cookman's side, Khalil Overton, just hobbled to the bench on one leg. We hope he is okay. Need him in the game. Got to have every player that you can have at this state of the game. Third down and three. Got to get to the 15-yard line. They're on the 17. 9.07 left to go in the third quarter. Lindsey is still in there at running back with Bird on the bench. Everett motions right to left. Jones, the shotgun snap, delayed handoff, pushing the pile is Lindsey. Did he get there? Did he get it's the first close. Down? It's very close. Oh, it depends on the spot. The BCU coaches are all pointing first down, but it will depend on the spot. He got right to the 15-yard line in a pile of bodies. You had that momentum though. You had that momentum running. They do give it the, give first, the down. first down. It was a good job by Isaiah Major, the defender for Florida A&M to stop him up there, but just that half yard difference. That power in the leg, that's the leg game. And that's the fullback of course, the running back, right? Because right. we got Bird back in there now who's more shifty. Lindsey has got the more power back. It's gonna be a handoff to Bird. Running left, looking for a block, won't find it. He's gonna be run down. Loss of one on the play. They say he got back to the original line of scrimmage. That was Courtney Cox right there on the stop. Courtney Cox came in the backfield and, and, tried, and stopped the ball. Yeah, and we've seen stretch plays like that from both sides all game not be very effective. The defense is doing an excellent job moving laterally, getting the linebackers in space to make the tackle. Second down and 10 from the FAMU 15 yard line. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. In the red zone, Bethune Cookman University. Jones awaits the snap, now it comes. Against the four man front, he steps in the pocket and throws a little to the goal Touchdown. line. Touchdown, Bethune Cookman. Touchdown, Maroon and Gold. And the Wildcats are back in the ball game. Davino Ellington with the touchdown grab on a beautiful post route. Well, now we can make this a game. 
we can make this a game because this is what exactly what they needed to at least get on the scoring board and to say, hey, this is what we're coming back into in the second half of the game. And that is what happens when you give uh, Jalen Jones time in the pocket. The offensive line did a beautiful job right there. They held they, up their they held up their end of the bargain. And he allowed time for his receiver to make the route. Ellington, beautiful post, as I said, caught the ball right in between the hash marks at the goal line for the touchdown. Mogdam, extra point, up and good. And with 7.30 to go, Bethune-Cookman is on the board again. It's 27-17, FAMU with the lead. We'll take a break and be right back at the Florida Blue Florida Classic on the Cat Eye Network. Welcome back to the Cat on Network's broadcast of the Florida Blue Florida Classic. I'm now joined with Sarah Nordine of Florida Blue on the broadcast. Sarah, why is this event so important to Florida Blue? Yeah, thanks for having me. The Florida Blue Classic, um, the Florida Florida Classics has become one of the most prominent HBCU matchups in the nation. And this is actually the 12th year Florida Blue has been proud to uh, serve as the game's presenting sponsor. What's unique about this game is that the two schools and their students benefit greatly from the classic weekend and all the revenue and money made from this event and the community are invested right back into the scholarships and other academic opportunities. And this is actually the largest fundraiser event for both universities. Mogdom kicks off, it's received at the 25 yard line. Xavier has it at the 30 and he's dragged down at the 32. That's where the Rattlers will begin their next series. Why is it so important to the city of Orlando to host the Florida Blue Florida Classic? Yeah, this is the 25th anniversary of the Florida Classics it has been played right here in Orlando. Since moving here in 1997, more than 1 1.5 million fans have attended the Florida Classic and more than 60,000 fill the stands. And this also brings more than $30 million in economic impact to Orlando and the Central Florida area. Now, this is my first Florida Classic. What makes this particular game different from all the other ones? Well, you know, the Florida Blue Florida Classic is more than just a football game. It's more like a family reunion <laughs> with family and friends coming together from across the state and the nation to celebrate their teams and participate in activities throughout the entire weekend. And, and this event is just truly focused on the community and bringing people together. And especially after the, the last few years, you know, we've had and, and being able to fill a stadium like this, it's, it's really been amazing and supporting these two historically black universities. So there was a illegal uh, motion on the offense on the kickoff. So Mogdown will be backed up to the 30 and will kick it off again. So tell us a little bit about local Florida Blue centers and how we can get involved. Yeah, so uh, Florida Blue is your local Blue Cross Blue Shield of Florida. And we have six Florida Blue centers located in Central Florida. And right now, as we all know, it's open enrollment. So it's really important to get your health coverage and for you and your loved ones. In addition, we have our care team, we have social workers and service ready to get you all your questions asked um, and answered for your health care. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah Nordine Thank from Florida so Blue joining us here at the Florida Blue Florida Classic on the Cat Eye Network. Thank you for having me. 
They'll kick off again from Mogdam. It is fielded at the 20 yard line, up to the 25, up to the 30, and head down for the returner for Florida A&M, pushing forward close to the 40. I think they'll spot the ball at the 38 yard line. As we thank Sarah for that interview, we get Chris set up back here for this next BCU defensive possession. <laughs> yeah, yep. And we welcome Chris back to the broadcast as BCU set up to defend is starting at uh, the FAMU 39 yard line. Chris, excellent job for Bethune Cookman defensively to open up the second half on that previous drive. How do they keep the momentum going here? You got to stop. Defense got to come out and continue to do what they do playing defense, stopping the ball, three and outs. That's going to be a factor of the game. Run to the left hand side. It's another running back on the field, the third of the game, Terrell Jennings. And now we have seen all three of the key rushers for Florida A&M today. We've seen majority of the time it's been uh, Jalen McLeod, but we've also seen A.J. Davis and now Terrell Jennings. Okay, oh, just, yeah, just, just getting the things a yeah, little back yeah, set up to back, the way they were. Just a little were. bit normal. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and 10 after the gain of nothing by Jordan. No, yeah, no, no, by Jennings, excuse me. In the flat it goes, and a tackle made right at the 40-yard line. Excellent job, Rosendo Lewis. In every play. Ever since the second half kicked off, he has been in just about every play there has been defensively. It was a quick slant to the near side to Xavier Smith, and Lewis just met him immediately after he caught the ball. So it'll be third down and nine for Florida A&M. This is what's gonna have to happen, have to happen for Bethune-Cookman. Defensively, three and out every play to get back into this game full, full heartedly. Well, Florida AM has done well in long yarded situations. Watch the deep cross. Lewis dancing in the defensive <laughs> backfield. He was like, I'm covering you. I'm covering you. As um, Musa looks to the sideline to change the play, three receivers set to the left, one to the right. They're on the 40 yard line. They need to get to the 49. McLeod back in the game, sidecar right. Musa takes the snap. He throws over the middle short. The pass is complete and wrapped up and drops short of the line to gain. Excellent job by the BCU defense. That pass went to DeAndre Francis. Caleb Sutherland on the stop. Caleb Sutherland was there to make the tackle at the 46-yard line, three yards shy, and out comes the punting unit for the Rattlers again. Chris Fadul to punt for the second straight series. Caleb get up like, hey, get in the weight room. I need you to get in the weight room. I'm stopping you from right here. And that was a nice grab, too. He held him by his, his ankles or his thighs, it looked like, and just pulled him and backwards. And pulled him in. Yeah, kept the feet going and, and arm wrap. Darnell Dees back at the 20-yard line to return for BCU. Look at the rush. Look Ooh, at the rush. They almost got there, but the punt is away. Caught by Dees, and he is oh. nailed at the 13-yard line. Excuse me, that's not Dees. That is Dakari Allen Johnson. That was a massive hit. Tavon Griffey. Tavon Griffey. What a hit. Flew in there. He came right in. Just smashed him at the 13-yard line. That is, I almost thought that he was going to take a fair catch. I, I Did thought, Allen Johnson? I thought he was going to take a fair catch. Oh, that. I've never played football, and I felt that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, um, he, he enacted a memory that I don't have <laughs> of getting hit like that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I've I played football, and I've seen a couple of hits. I even felt a couple, but I uh, remember a couple of times that I've put a few <laughs> just like that in that same position. So I understand the hit. What position did you play? <laughs> I played outside linebacker and strong safety. So I enjoyed uh, playing the game of football, and it was amazing. Mm -hmm. It's nothing like it. Uh, until you get on that gridiron, that grid you will not have a feeling. It's a different type of feel out this world. And there's no sport really on earth that does pageantry the way football does. It doesn't matter if it's high school, if it's youth football has a big following, you know, in hotbeds like Florida and Texas and all the way up Southern to California. Oh, yeah. Yes. All the way up to massive events like the Florida Classic. Mm -hmm. where you got 50,000 people in the stands. It's just that kind of 
you know, you want to be a part of something. You see this as a kid, you grew up going to these games, and you think, I want to be down there one day. And so it, It's the excitement that everyone gets. I, I can do what he do. I can make the shifty moves. Mm -hmm. I can make the great hits. I can make the impactful plays. And that's what football is all about, making those impactful plays and bringing your team up to, up to speed. Taking a look at some statistics from the game. Actually, Bethune-Cookman up in total yards, 193 to 186. Um, and that's mostly because of the rushing yards. FAMU hasn't really used the ground game all that much except in short yarded situations, winning 56 to 16 on the ground. Jones, 16 for 26, 137 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Musa, 11 of 15, 138, one touchdown. He also caught a touchdown pass yes. to Xavier Smith on the Philly special at the end of the first half. This is becoming a great game right here because it seems like the crowd is getting exciting. The crowd is getting back into it. Everybody's waiting to see who's going to come out and have the bragging rights at the end oh, of yeah. this game. And you can talk about playoff implications for Florida A&M. You can talk about, you know, second best team in this sweat. You throw that all out the window when it's maroon and gold versus orange and green. Yes. Because... It, you know, rivalry games do that to it's, you. It's a rivalry game, a rivalry that's been going back since the 1920s. And these two teams right here, good friends, good people, good people to hang out with. But it's all about the bragging rights at the end. And that's included for football, basketball, cross country. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and speaking of Florida A&M versus Bethune-Cookman rivalries, you've got volleyball, volleyball. SWAC semifinals tonight at 530 in Texas. Actually, 6.30 here because it's 5.30 Central. So uh, to play for a chance to go to the SWAT championship. It's, it's all about the bragging rights and having, no, and having that capability. First and 10 for Bethune-Cookman at their own 13-yard line. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Jones in the shotgun. Snap to Jones, hands it to Bird. No, Jones keeps it himself. Tries to run around the left-hand side. He's going to be dragged down from behind at the 13-yard line. Didn't get anywhere. By Anthony Dunn, number 53, defensive end on the stop. For FAMU. And that's impressive from a guy, I don't know if he's a linebacker or a defensive end, but he ran down Jalen Jones, who is not a slow guy. Not slow at all. Jones, 6'4", 210 pounds. He's a tall quarterback, too. A lot of You see a lot of smaller quarterbacks, but you don't often see tall quarterbacks. He'll be able to see over the defense. Second down and 10 for the 13-yard line. Jones, back to pass, pressure comes, he throws over the middle, it's knocked away, excellent job on the back end by F the FAMU defender. That was Javon Morgan again. We've called his name a couple of times tonight. Morgan has been playing great defense all, all season long, uh, doing different things here and there. But tonight, tonight it makes the difference. You gotta play, you gotta play your game and you gotta play your position the way you're supposed to play your position. We line back up. Yep, this is a tough one. Third down and 10 from the 13. Jones with the hard count. He takes the snap, the rush comes. Jones steps away from it, gets it to the 15, the 20. He's free, he's running free past everybody to the 30. To the 40, to the 50. He's from the FAMU side of the field all the way down to the 30 yard line. He's gonna flip the field all by himself. Jalen Jones with about a 60 yard run. Did he just turn on the Jets or what? Oh, he just turned on the Jets and then some. They brought the extra defender. It was a cornerback blitz. And when, and that, when that blitz came in, he just went right for it and saw the field wide open and was gone. The grasslands of the Serengeti <laughs> were laid before Jalen Jones. They had all the space in the world to run through the middle of the field. And from their own 13, it's now first and 10 uh, Bethune-Cookman at the FAMU 30. Two by two, the receivers. Bird takes the snap. He, ha he goes himself and falls down for just a gain of two yards. Wow, what a play from Jalen Jones. There have been a couple of those times today, right? The pass for a touchdown, the rush by Bird for a touchdown, that Jones 60 yard run. I'm gonna see exactly how long and, that run was and on the stat especially the, the one-handed catch. 58 uh, yards officially on the Jalen Jones run. Wow. I wish I had jets like that. <laughs> <laughs> I could probably fly back and forth. Yeah, for a second I thought he was gonna go to the end zone, but. I, it, I believe it was uh, Morgan again Morgan who again ran him stop. down and made a touchdown saving tackle. Second down and eight whistle and a timeout Bethune-Cookman. They didn't really like the look. 
We'll take a timeout with them. BCU trying to climb back into this game. Down by 13 with a 150 to go in the third. They've got the ball approaching the red zone here on the Cat Eye Network. Welcome back to Camping World Stadium, the Florida Blue Florida Classic. The Bethune-Cookman Wildcats trail the Florida a and Rattlers 27 to 14, 150 to go in the third quarter. And this third quarter has been all Wildcats and all Coach Terry Wildcats. Sims. Wildcats, let's go Wildcats as you hear the music playing in the background uh, Coach, and the crowd cheering. Coach let's Terry Sims must have got him them something in the water <laughs> in, the, in the locker room. Here we go, second down and eight from the 28 yard line. Remember the 58 yard run by Jalen Jones Flipped the field when they were on their own 13. Two receivers on the right, two receivers on the left. And Run I it. think that's Terry Lindsay in there and not Bird at running back. Jones takes the knee high snap. Pressure coming from the right, he steps up. Now he runs. Jones looking, looking, he throws it away. Good quarterback play, nothing was open. Got rid of the ball, lived to see another down. And keep it down to two and eight. Third down? Yeah, third Second. and eight. Third and eight. So, right at this moment, I think they're barely in Dylan Mogdom's field goal range. Right, barely, just barely. Uh, probably about another 15 yards or so, then we'll be right in the good field goal range mm -hmm. uh, for Bethune Cookman's kicker. So even but if even if you don't get the first down, you want to get some yards here. At least get something in to get close with their field goal range. Oh, they've gone super aggressive here. Five wide, three to the left, two to the right, and FAMU was not ready for it. I think the Rattlers are going to call timeout. As you see, Coach. Referee looks like he's fixing Simmons. a helmet down there. Actually, I'm not sure what's going on. Hold on, we're going to get the official now. Okay, so it's just a game clock error. So the clock ran during the last stoppage. So that's just simple enough. But now the pressure mounts, right? If you're Jalen Jones, you're standing all, sitting all alone there in the backfield, and you just got to sit there and stew in it for another 30 seconds. You got you to gotta take, the, the take the pressure, and this is where you become, boys become men. Five wide plus Everett on the right-hand side. Third down and eight from the 28. Big play here for Bethune-Cookman. They bring Bird in motion to the backfield. Jones takes the snap. Four-man rush. He sits in the pocket. He fires down the right-hand side. It's caught, caught at the five-yard line. First down. A diving catch beautifully done by Davino Ellington. Ellen, what a catch right on the post route. Going right into the end zone. That was and the exact same play he scored the touchdown on in the previous drive, just five yards away from the end zone this And time. we just said, all we needed to do is run a nice little post route right into it, and bam, there it was. And they gave Jalen Jones time in the pocket. Time in the pocket to throw the ball. Now BCU inside the five, set up first and goal at the three-yard line. Keyshawn Bird has one rushing touchdown already today. He looks like he might be set up for another one. One man in motion right to left. That's Ellington. Hand off Bird, looking for an opening. He shakes off one defender and dives down close to the goal line. A flag and comes flag in late. Play. 
And the Bethune-Cookman sideline is clapping, so this, this may Could be going to be a personal against, foul face mask? Maybe. Oh, as though Bird's helmet came Bird off. Bird's so helmet came right off as he was going down for the tackle. It may be another face mask. It is a face mask. So they're going to give him automatic half, first down, huh? half the distance to the goal, so it puts it from the three to the one and a half. So you're right here on the goal line. What do you do? But crucially, you get a fresh set of downs. So you got four chances, and being down two scores, I think they're going to take all four chances, even if it gets that far. You take we all hope, four chances. You, you hope it gets here right now. 40 we'll seconds see. left to go in the th third quarter. From the one-yard line, Jones under center. Everett motions right to left. Jones tries key. to sneak. Push. I don't think he got there. Is I it a don't push? think he got there. No, he didn't get there. Back to the line of scrimmage and nothing else. So that's one down gone, second down and goal from the one, and that should be the end of the third quarter unless BC wants to burn a timeout. I don't know. Nope, nope, they're gonna keep the clock running. Yeah, 15 seconds and counting now. Jones is coming Jones out because his helmet off. came off. Jones' helmet came off. What do you do here? Now you've so got Franklin Jr. In. Tyrone Franklin Jr., the sophomore in at quarterback. I think they're just going to let the quarter run out and have the break to talk about it. That's the end of the third quarter, and we've got a football game on our hands here. We head to the fourth. That's Florida a AM 27, Bethune Cookman 14, but knocking on the door. This is the Florida Blue Florida Classic on the Cat Eye Network. You won't want to miss the fourth quarter. Welcome back to Camping World Stadium, the Florida Blue Florida Classic. It's the Rattlers 27, the Bethune Cookman Wildcats 14, but BCU is on the doorstep. They've got second down and goal from the one yard line, but crucially, Jalen Jones is out because his helmet came off on the last play of the third quarter, and it is a Tyrone Franklin Jr., a sophomore at quarterback. Listen to this crowd. Listen to this excitement. This is what the Classic is all about right here. It's these bragging rights. Oh, yeah. And if, if Bethune-Cookman scores here, we got a one-score one game in the fourth quarter. They've spread it out a little bit. Two receivers to the left. And Franklin in the shotgun. There's a little bit of a delay here getting started because the one of the... The red hat who controls TV is still talking to the referee. Now we now go. Now we're to back go. into the game. 
What do we draw right, up here, here we for go. Franklin? Franklin in the gun with Bird and two receivers to the left. Now Everett motions into the backfield. Handoff, Bird, he's tripped up and dropped to the three. Nothing doing for Kishon Bird as the defense for Florida A&M collapsed and it's third and goal. Eric Smith was right there in on the tackle number eight for FAMU. And then a host of other teammates came in to make the stop. I don't hate what they tried to do. They tried to spread it out a little bit to give Bird some running room, but just a great play by the defense. And now third and three. I, I hope we wouldn't get to the fourth down and goal moment, but we might be getting there. Well, Jalen is back in the game. They're still in shotgun though. Third down and goal from the three. Here we go, Jalen Jones is back in the game. The crowd gets loud here. Jones looks to throw to the corner of the end zone. <laughs> Incomplete. Incomplete. Everett fell down. And there's no, a flag on oh, the play. Oh, the flag came the in. The flag came in just a little late, but there is a flag on the play. Oh boy, I, I couldn't see who he was matched up 1v1 with. It was kind of tough, but it looked like oh, it's a holding penalty. It was Javon Morgan again. He's been the star defender for FAMU today in the secondary. He was matched up one-on-one -on -one with Everett. Let's see what the call is. I see some I see it was a goals. lot of, it was a lot of grabbing a lot of first down Bethune Cookman first University down holding Bethune on the Cookman. play so they're gonna get the ball first down and go at the two. Oh, they almost brought in the jumbo package with uh, <laughs> Antoine Wells the 315 pound lineman but he goes back to the bench he goes back to the sideline because first down for Bethune Cookman let's get right in here and run this ball on the two yard line three receivers left Jones none to the right Jones throws the screen, touchdown Bethune Cookman, touchdown Maroon and gold. Beautifully Corey executed Reed. screen to Corey Reed, and the Wildcats are back in the ball game. It's a one score game. It's a football game on hand. How about that? that? Was, what was, well, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, they didn't count it. No, I think somebody called a timeout, I think is what happened. They didn't put the score on the scoreboard yet. Nor is it updated on my stat sheet. I can't, I couldn't see what was wrong with that. I didn't see a flag. It looked like um, a timeout for Bethune Cookman University, it seemed like. Well, yeah, but Corey Reed went into the end zone. I'm not sure why they didn't put the touchdown on the board. It still says 27 14. So there's a little bit of confusion well, going on here. Just a little, I think that's a lot of confusion that's taking place right now. Score still says 27 14. But what we've just witnessed was a nice little setup play, a pop pass to, the, to Corey yeah. Reed, the receiver, to go right into the end zone. So to give a visual for those of you at home, there were three receivers lined up one by one from the middle to the outside. Mm -hmm. What they did right before the snap is come quickly and bunch formation with Reed, the point of the bunch, pointing backwards. What Jalen Jones did is he just pitched it to Reed, and there and was two blockers Reed, right there. Reed received the ball and walked right into the end zone. So no touchdown, no touchdown. The offense is back out on the field for first for first down and goal. I'm shocked. I'm, I'm floored. Bunch oh. formation left, single right. Everett moving left to right. First and goal from the two. Apparently the last play didn't count. Jones to throw to the back corner and he overthrew, he overthrew Everett and he threw that one almost to the first row of stands. Everett wants a flag but that ball was uncatchable it was uncatchable it was overthrown a little bit too high we know Everett is tall but it was thrown a little bit too high the only thing I can think of what happened is why the previous touchdown didn't count is somebody called a timeout Bethune Cookman must have called a timeout before the snap and essentially iced their own offense and I yes it, it set them up and set them back because Bethune Cookman's down to one timeout left with 14 minutes to go that's the only thing that I think could have happened Second down and goal from the two. Jones in the gun. He looks to throw. He looks to throw. Now he escapes to the right. He throws to the back of the end zone. Caught Everett by with Everett. Everett touchdown received. This time. Touchdown is good. This time it's touchdown Bethune Cookman. Touchdown Maroon and gold. What well, amazing it, play. Well, it was a little bit of an adventure in the red zone, <laughs> but we finally got there with Everett picking up the touchdown. I don't know about you, but it seemed like my heart started beating even <laughs> faster. The joys of college football. Wow. <laughs> a touchdown that was already in the end zone that, for whatever reason, a timeout took place. 
Then we come back into the plays again, get two extra plays that we couldn't make, and then all of a sudden, touchdown in the end zone to Everett. Seventh receiving touchdown of the season for Kamari Everett. That leads the team. And Dylan Mogdam is set up to kick the extra point. As you, you were talking during the last time out. It's getting a little chilly. It's down into the 60s. The temperature has dropped down into the mid to late 60s right here. And this is good football weather. Because this is the type of weather right here as a defensive player that make you want to hit. It make you want to slap the taste out of somebody's out of somebody's mouth on the field. Now, I <laughs> think that there will be plenty of people listening to this broadcast that will debate you on that is good football <laughs> weather. Oh, the kick, the extra point is extra blocked. Extra point is blocked. FAMU picks it up and runs it out to the 30-yard line. A flag, flag on comes the in late. After the play, it's the two number threes square off. That's Corey Reed for Bethune-Cookman and Kendall Bowler for FAMU. I'm not sure what the flag is going to be, but I don't think they're going to re-kick it in any case. It might be something on the kickoff. But, man, uh, that's a, wow. a dagger for Bethune-Cookman. They could have brought this to within six. They're now sitting down seven. Any given Saturday, anything can happen in this game. Yeah. We seen a block. We seen a block kick early in the in the beginning of the first half. Now you see another block from FAMU on this side. Two blocked extra points today. That's that's key. When was the last time you saw that? <laughs> in, twice in one game. Yeah. So we're still waiting on the referees to make the decision. Here it is. Personal foul. Face mask on the on receiver team. Bethune Cook. And they're going to be enforcing it on the kickoff. Well, Bethune-Cookman is back in the ball game. They're down just seven. Just seven points. Rattlers, seven. 27. BCU Wildcats, 20. We'll take a break, and when we come back, FAMU gets the ball again, trying to continue to ice the game. We can got to believe in the Wildcats' defense one more time. When we come back, they'll take the field right here on the Cat Eye Network. Welcome back to Camping World Stadium. It's Michael Torello and Chris Shaw here in the broadcast booth for you on the Cat Eye Network. And something I've noticed during that last time out, Chris, is the complete demeanor change on the yes. BCU sideline. They went into halftime hanging their heads, down by four scores. They have battled their way back, and they're down by seven points. I saw people hyping each other up on the sideline. They're ready to get after it. Like I said, Bethune-Cookman have always been a team to known in the second half as a comeback team. And this is what they've done, and this is what they're doing. So. Only down seven points. Fourth quarter, 14 minutes left to go. It's a thriller right here in Orlando, Florida. Yeah, and something that's very important to note is the BCU defense has stepped up. Florida AM sure. has run seven offensive plays in the second half to BCU's a uh, lot. I don't have the number right in front of me, but it's... Bethune-Cookman ran more plays on that last drive than FAMU has had in the entire second half. Bethune-Cookman defense, and that's what we started out with in the second half, stating that the defense is going to have to come up and show up three and out for every series, every down, in and out. And they've done that so far. And they've, they've done their part. All right, Mogdom set to kick it off. This crowd is excited. Smith and Bowler set back to receive for FAMU. 
Mogdam swings the right foot through. It's a line drive kick taken to the five by Smith. Up to the 10, 15 running on the numbers, 20. Cut back 30, towards the 35 and down to the 36 yard line. Nice return for Smith, and that's where FAMU will get the football. So here we uh -oh. go. I did something happen that I didn't uh -oh. see. Uh-oh, it's, it's getting, it's getting oh, serious. Okay. It's, getting, yeah. it's getting serious down there on the gridiron. And remember, for FAMU, this isn't just a rivalry game. This is a potential win and you're in for the FCS playoffs That's, as well. This is it. This is it. Do FAMU, do Bethune Cookman come in and, and throw in that sour patch of candy? <laughs> We'll do now and later is what we're going to take from fam you <laughs> man you're out here with the candy references it's too early for this it's too early for this it's it's still only 5 15. <laughs> first down and 10 for fam you from the 32 yard line they go right to left wearing all white musa back to pass he throws one-on-one -on -one coverage on the near sideline oh, flag flag, flag on the play it was one-on-one -on -one coverage with omari hill robinson and Kwame Clark, no, excuse me, Kobe Gross for FAMU, and... Yeah, uh, uh, that was a lot of action down there on I'm, that side. I'm on that side. I'm trying to look at this through BCU colored glasses, but I, I can see a pretty clear path to a flag there. And it was penalties that killed Bethune-Cookman in the second quarter. They were charged with seven penalties seven. in the second quarter in for se 52 yards. They were clean in the third, but, but if they start going backwards again, it's going to be very tough, and it just gives momentum to the FAMU sideline. That the penalties is going to put a damper in, in every game, every time. That penalty puts FAMU at the 50-yard line. Hand off, running rights, and dragged down by his ankles is Jalen McLeod. Nice tackle. I believe that was Rosendo Lewis. Rosendo Lewis on the stop. Second and 10, 13, 32 left to go in the fourth quarter, 27 to 20. Rosendo so, Lewis missed the first two games of the season, sorry. Uh, and he still is in the top ten in SWAC in tackles per game. Well, see, that's what happened when you got hard passion for the game. It don't matter. I'm, I might be out in the beginning, but I'm coming back in, and I'm coming back in wholeheartedly. Second down and ten from the 48-yard line of Bethune-Cookman. Snap to Musa. He hands the ball off, and mm. Jalen McLeod is ripped down in the backfield. Beautiful job by BCU. The one and only Judas McKenzie. As usual, he's been quiet in this in this game, but he's stepping up and he's doing what he needs to do. The, the de it's usually it's been the defensive ends, right? Eddie Walls, we've yeah. name we've called a lot. Um, we've called Chris Grant's name a couple of times. Mason Hall's been in there, but yeah, Judas McKenzie's been quiet a little bit tonight. Showed up big there with a the tackle, and now F uh, FAMU is behind the sticks again. Third down and thirteen. Third down and 12, they gave him a pretty generous spot. The ball's on the 50 yard line, right in the middle of that Florida, beautiful Florida Classic logo at midfield. The BCU sideline gets loud and rowdy for the defense. Musa, snap, he has time, he looks in the flat, he looks checked down to the running back, he stopped short of the 40 yard line. Omari Hill Robinson makes up for his error in committing the penalty by stopping McLeod short of the line to gain. Robinson and Sutherland right there on both both of them coming in, tag teaming, stopping the play. This is what I'm talking about. Great defense is what's going to help you to lead and win a game. It's a third punt in a row for Chris Fadul, who didn't see the only saw the field once in the first half. Now he's seeing it a lot now, right? <laughs> yeah, but a potential to really bad. Oh no! Oh, it's what fourth a trick. down pass. It's a trick play. That's what a the trick 30. play! The punter receives the ball and throws it. And it's caught and running all the way down inside the 20 is Jeremiah Pruitt. Wow. What no one saw that coming. Wow. Wow. Like I said, all or nothing. The punter. Now the punter's a quarterback. Chris <laughs> Fadul dropped back and threw and nobody covered Pruitt over the middle. Unbelievable. And FAMU has a first down inside the red zone at the 18. They did it with the trick play on the touch, throwback touchdown in the first half, and they've done it with the trick play again. Wow, trick plays. Musa hands it to McLeod, running left. He gets his legs ripped out from under him at the 18-yard line. That was Joshua Thornhill on the tackle. He's made a couple of nice ones today. He's been in, in plays here and there, but that's a great way to come up 
from the defensive back point of view to stop the ball. And the FAMU rushing game has really not had it good tonight. Only 16 total yards on the ground for Florida a and The rush defense for Bethune-Cookman has done very well in stopping up McLeod. They do change running backs. Terrell Jennings is in there for the Rattlers. The one thing this does do if you're Florida a and is it drains the clock. Second down and 10. Clap to snap for Musa. He fakes the handoff, he throws it to the tight end, who rolls out to the 10 yard line to the five, touchdown Florida a and The Rattlers convert the fake punt into six points and go up by two scores once again. What a dagger in the heart right there for this defense who's been playing great all second half. Coming in, three and out, three and out. And oh my God, just to get a trick play off the of special teams to come down back offensively to bring the offensive back up to go right into the end zone for a touchdown. That was Kamari Young, wow. the tight end on the touchdown. 33-20. And now 34-20 as the extra point is up and good by Romo Martinez. And BCU's gonna have to pick themselves up. Ten Once minutes, again. Ten minutes is a lot of time for this squad to come back in. And with the way the offense has been playing in this second half, it's very possible, but man, that was a big drive for the Rattlers playoff hopes. It was a great it was a great drive for the defense, too, because the defense did their part. Nobody expected the trick play. They've done it twice. 14 <laughs> points off of trick plays for Florida AM. They lead the Bethune Cookman Wildcats 34 to 20. 55,257 fans have shown up today Just for the Florida Blue Florida Classic and we'll be right back to bring you more. Welcome back to the Cat Eye Network's broadcast of the Florida Blue Florida Classic. Michael Toretto and Chris Shaw here with you. After Florida A&M thought, they thought they were out. They were down on the canvas for nine counts. And then they got up and threw a counter punch with a huge fourth down fake punt pass for a first down. And they eventually converted that one into seven points and lead 27, uh, 34 to 20. To 20. The, the score on my... Live stats is not updated. Let me refresh that page. It, 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 that was that was a hit right there for Bethune Cookman, but it don't put them down and it don't count them out because, like I said, defense is the name of the game and defense is what's going to help win. So if they can come back and do something right here in this half, we've still got ten minutes to go. Kick taken at the three yard line by Dees and Dees has nowhere to go and he's going to be run down to the fifteen yard line. So the offense is going to have to come out. The O-line is going to have to hold their end of the bargain and hold the ball and give, give Jones enough time to either pursue the ball down the field, throw the ball down the field, or we're going to have to open up these gaps enough to get the ball through the run game with Bird and just run this game. And you see, well, you can't see. We can see Mike Canales, the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach, talking to Jalen Jones. He's in his ear right before. And I think he, the message has to be, you're doing good. Keep doing what you're doing. We've, we've played well in this second half. 
And you know, we were we were right there in it for a second, and we could still be. Ten minutes is a long time. It's a long time. They'll start from the 16-yard line, working left to right. Jones in the gun. Now the pocket collapses. Jones takes off up the middle. He crashed into it at the 20-yard line for a gain of four. And that's that looked like a first half play. That was a first half play. Um, you know, you got the jitterbugs on. You know, you got a lot. You got to get those jitterbugs and shake those jitterbugs off every now and then. And that was probably one of those ones where, hey, let me just take control of the game the way I know how. But the difference is that was a four-yard gain. In the first half, that might have been a sack. Right. Because Jalen Jones' head is in the right place, and he's playing well right now. Second down and six from the 20. Jones back to pass. Here comes the blitz. He's going to be dragged down and cleaned up. Back at the original line of scrimmage at the 16. And, and Jones is slow to get up off the campus. His helmet comes off as well. He's going to have to sit out of play. Wow. That, that FAMU defense is starting to pick back up like he did in the first half. And you know what? They feed, they're feed feeding off their offense, right? The offense wasn't getting anything going. The defense wasn't getting anything going. Now that the FAMU offense is back, the defense pinning their ears back and getting to the football. Third down and 10. And we got, the sophomore, is coming in. we got the sophomore quarterback, Tyrone Franklin, in the ball game on third and ten. Two receivers left, two receivers right, ball in the right hash. Franklin steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle. It is, oh, ah. diving, almost catch. Marcus Riley dove for it, and he came up a fingertip short. And here comes the punting unit for Bethune-Cookman, led by Ben Lennon. That was a good throw from the sophomore. It was a good throw. It was a good throw for the sophomore. Just didn't make the connection. It was right there, wide open. And he just let him a just hair's too, breadth too, too far. It, yeah. And Lennon, with his heels almost on the goal line, a place he's been far too much today, getting set to punt this one away. For Bethune-Cookman University, special teams is going to have to play a major, a major factor. They're going to have to come in and, and force a couple of fumbles, get some interceptions. The punt is away, Jamare Sherrard is back there. He calls for a fair catch and he takes it at the 40 yard line. And there may be a little bit of afters as there's a Bethune Cookman player asking for a foul and a family player running back to his bench very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> there's a little bit of comedy there. No flag thrown, FAMU back on offense. Uh, and we're gonna take a time out here. 8.32 to go, FAMU leads by 14, 34, 20. This is the Cat Eye Network's broadcast of the Florida Classic. Welcome back to the Florida Blue Florida Classic. It's Michael Torello and Chris Shaw in the commentary box for you. The, bat the Rattlers back on offense after forcing a Bethune Cookman three and out. They've got the ball at their own 40 yard line working right to left. 8.32 to go in the ball game and FAMU is up 34 to 20. Defense is gonna have to play their part. Defense is gonna have to come up and force the three and out and stop the running game. Musa hands it off and they do indeed stop the running game. That was not McLeod. I it was one of the other two running backs. I couldn't really see who, but he was stopped up for a gain. Or a loss of one, actually. They stopped him all the way back at the 39-yard line. And it there is... There was Jaden on the tackle. Yep, and Terrell Jennings is in the ball game for the Rattlers. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see any more of Jalen McLeod. He's done a 
<laughs> the yeoman's work for running yeah, the ball for, for FAMU tonight, but he's only got 14 yards. <laughs> yeah, it, this defense has been playing stopping the run game. Musa to throw, and the pass is caught, tiptoeing the sideline right past the 50 to the 48-yard line of Bethune-Cookman. Excellent tiptoe job there by David Mangio. Haven't called his name for a Haven't. while, but he's back in the game. Brings it to a first down for FAMU. The clock runs under eight minutes to go. He did good standing in bound. That was a great catch from a turnaround to just having the ball right there in your chest. Turn around and grab the ball and, and kept both feet in. And the entire sideline for BCU wanted him to be out of bounds, but he did get the foot down. McLeod back in, fake the handoff to him, throw underneath to the receiver at the 30 yard line and takes four Wildcats to bring down David Mangio at another big first down for FAMU and Mangio is talking. Woo! It, it, it's getting heated over there, Mike. Mangio is excited. Sound like he's saying, you can't stop me. That's what it sounds like he's saying. Yeah, and two passes, they went right to Mangio. Late substitution for FAMU is they're just going to let the clock run every play here. Yeah, that, that's the, to be on the safe side, that's what you should do. You up two touchdowns, you don't want to give, you don't want to put the ball back in Bethune Cookman's hand because Bethune Cookman can become electrifying once they get that ball back in their hands. And they've played well in the second half. Musa. Time of the pocket. Now it collapses. Now he goes down. Back at the 40 yard line. Flags Three everywhere. Three flags on the play. Wow. Three flags down. Every uh, official, both umpires, face mask on Bethune Cookman, which is going to wipe away the sack. And that's right back to what you were talking about in the second quarter the penalties. Penalties, is, it, it, it hurts. They had Musa dead to rights for about an eight yard loss on the sack. And yet that's a 15 yard gain and a first down. They're gonna spot the ball at the 15 yard line. First down, FAMU. I guess the crowd is excited trying to get a wave going. <laughs> the Bethune Cookman Band's have been trying to get that wave going for about 15 minutes. It hasn't worked yet. <laughs> Musa with two receivers to aim for, one to each side. Hand off McLeod, out of the shotgun. McLeod breaks free through the 10 and dragged down to the six yard line. A little bit of afters too. Some pushing and shoving going on between both parties at the end of the play. Excuse me, that was Terrell Jennings on the carry, not McLeod. They've both got the kind of orange undershirts. Right. So it makes it kind of hard to tell them apart. But it is Jennings in there. They move the pile down about an eight yard pickup to the 12 yard line, no to the seven yard line, excuse me. First down, or second, let's reset. Second down and two from the seven yard line. Musa hands to Jennings, running left, trying to get the corner, he does and he dives and he for the pile right into the touchdown. Touchdown FAMU. And that should put the nail in the coffin. Wow, what a dagger in the heart for this this defense who came out here and worked the whole entire second half playing three and outs, three and outs the whole second half. And to, to get something like this, ah, it's a dagger in the heart. Well, and listen, Bethune-Cookman, they're going to end the year two and nine. They were in a lot of games that, you know, maybe it's a coin flip. Could have gone either way. Could have gone either way all season long for Bethune-Cookman. Uh, but penalties were a major factor in a lot of games that they played in uh, this season. So... Line yeah. up for the extra point. It was a, it was a one score loss against Alabama A&M. One score loss against Prairie View. One score loss against Alcorn State. You know, you turn those, you turn those three losses into wins. You know, we, you, you could be competing. You know, you know for a better record. But right. It, it, it's something that over the off season, Coach Sims and, and this group of coaches and, and his have, administrators going to have to get back, and, and you're going to have to to rebuild, You're right? Gonna have to come back to the drawing board and see what we need to do. What what are we what are we mixing in and how we mix in and how we play call is, is gonna be a major factor into your off season so you know what you're dealing with coming in with everybody else. And recruiting is obviously gonna be super important, not just high school but also transfers. 
major factorization. Big major, part major of the college factor. landscape now with the transfer portal and extra COVID of, uh, eligibility. We're still cycling through players right. that didn't play in 2020, so I have a fifth year tacked on. And, you know, finding those players that want to come to Daytona Beach, to Bethune Cookman, and, and bring this program back to prominence. This is a this is a national level program. You know, we've got uh, four HBCU national championships. We won 14 conference titles. You know, this, uh -huh. is, this is a big program. Who wouldn't want to come to Daytona Beach exactly. and study? <laughs> Who wouldn't want to come to Daytona Beach and just gaze into the water and gaze <laughs> into the sun or the beach while you got a book in your hand to get in the grade for class, right? <laughs> But you got to entice the players that, that want to play for you. And it, it's program, it's culture. And remember, this is a program that is only two years removed from basically being dead in the water and right. not playing at all and, and, and having nobody on the field and nobody uh, nobody working out and doing nothing. Right. So the job that Coach Sims has had to do, and I talked to, to him a little bit about this in the season kickoff show, which you can find on the Cat Eye Network. Um, he said something to the effect of it's hard building a program back up from nothing and you know you, you got to find guys that are willing to buy into the culture and maybe not win right away but are willing to put in the work to where you could get there at the end and, and that's the key factor you got to have young men that's willing to work who understands the assignment and, and in the words of uh, the youth today <laughs> understanding the assignment <laughs> so and I, even though you look at the score and it's 41 20 this game was close for the majority of the game. Majority for the, of the first, game. For the first quarter, Bethune Cookman right there with them, but only down one score. The second quarter got away from a bit. Third quarter, they dominated in the third quarter. They got all the way back to a seven point game. They scored two straight touchdowns. Fourth quarter, they got away from them a little bit. It was bit. just right there. And so you, you play well half the game. If you maybe put a, a third of those four quarters in it, maybe it's a closer game. and. It's, it's close for Bethune-Cookman. It's close to being there, and I think there's a bright future ahead for this Wildcats team. Still 5.18 to play. Kickoff returned by Dees the 10. Up to the 20, he's going to be hit and dropped at the 24-yard line, and that's where Bethune-Cookman will take over. 41-20. to 20. FAMU has the lead over BCU. Five minutes and 11 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. One timeout left for Bethune-Cookman University. All three timeouts left for Florida A&M. BCU, <laughs> BCU burned one of their timeouts on a play where they scored back it, in the third it quarter. It was that play right there that kind of messed it up for Bethune Cookman offensively uh, when they made that when they called that timeout. Mm -hmm. That timeout could have that that play right there could have been a deciding factor for them to come mm -hmm. back and take the lead. And really, the momentum swung in the game with the fake punt first down oh, yes. for Florida a &M. That was the big moment because Bethune Cookman had been dominating the game. Here's Jones scrambling out of the pocket to the 25 and rumbled down at the 26-yard line, gain of two. Um, that fake punt was a dagger. It was, yeah. a, it was a major dagger. Because BCU uh, was dominating the game. They'd scored 14 straight points. The, They'd forced a third straight, not a three and out, but got off the field in five plays. Uh -huh. And the just... Who, can, who can, would have thought that the punter who's been sitting on the sideline most of the game would come out and be your quarterback? Yeah. <laughs> and it, it totally swung the momentum of this ball game. Second down and eight. Jones, quick hitter to the near side, pass caught. And Khalil Overton. So you're gonna have to use the catch. You're gonna have to use offensively if we're gonna talk about this. You're gonna have to use your arm strength and use your out of bounds to use the clock and save the clock as much as you can. They uh, called, you're down by two scores. They called Overton inbound, so the clock runs. It was a gain of four. Now it brings up third down and four. And I think we're gonna get maybe the third. BCU timeout here. The referee what is saying something I can't hear him. Oh, they're still talking to the FAMU band about playing when Bethune Cookman is set and ready for the snap. Right. They've now warned. I think they've warned both bands that, now. That's the second. That's the second warning that's went out from the referees today about playing uh, while the teams are on the field running the ball. Jones with two receivers each side, takes the shotgun snap, bubble screen to the far side left, getting around a block and picking up a first down and more close to the 40 yard line is uh, Corey Reed. And he was, he's probably the maddest person about that timeout because he scored the he, he touchdown. He was the one that scored the touchdown. He's got a touchdown taken off the board. In the beginning part of the fourth quarter, in the, 
that that touchdown was a was a was that touchdown would have been the main the key factor for them to come back to rescore again on this end yeah. when they made the other touchdown. All right, uh, first down and ten for Bethune Cookman at their own 38 yard line after the pickup. Snap to Jones. It's a low snap. He has to duck and cover as the offensive line went out to dinner and a wave of white jerseys sacks him back at the 28-yard line. And it wasn't a wave to surrender. They were just coming in. All you see is white coming at you. Excuse me, the 32-yard line. So it is a loss of seven. Six. Six was well as spot it. Uh, it was a little bit different than what I saw, but it is uh, second down and 16. Three minutes left to go in the third, fourth quarter. And 41 to 20. And some As of the, we line back up. Some of the 55,000 plus in attendance starting to feather away. Feather away, trying to get a head start on traffic. Jones pressured immediately again, goes down immediately again. It's another sack for this FAMU defense. And I'm going to look up how many they have because it's a lot. Number 53, Anthony Dunn out of Orlando, Florida. Playing in his hometown, I'm sure his He's family's here. all here. He's here having a, a great game. That's that's not his first nor his second, I believe. Uh, he's been back there in that backfield a lot for FAMU. Seven sacks for Florida A&M today. Bethune-Cookman has gotten down Musa just twice, but they've been in the backfield plenty other times. Plenty of times. I really liked the Bethune-Cookman run defense today. They yeah. did a fantastic job. They held... Uh, Florida A&M to only 28 yards on the ground. Jones rolls to his left, throws over the middle of the ball, goes right through the hands of Davino Ellington and incomplete. That uh, brings up fourth down and 19 to go. Uh, you bring your what you, you bring your punt team out yeah. and just let your defense try to play out. With 155 to go, I don't think that FAMU will go aggressive anymore. Up two scores. So FAMU came back after the COVID and won last year's classic battle, and they'll come back again to win this year's classic battle two years in a row since the teams got back together. And this is, what, the second year that both teams have been in the, in the SWAT conference? Yeah. This is the second of the first time that FAMU has beaten Bethune-Cookman in back-to-back -back years since 2010. Yes. It's been 12 years since the Rattlers have gotten over us, won over on us two years in a row. That's an excellent punt. Excellent it punt. takes a BCU bounce all the way to the one yard line and it is gonna be downed at the one yard line. How about that? Well, they haven't given up. No. They're still giving it all that they got. That was an and excellent that's what you, punt. And that's what you expect out of your, your team, no matter the circumstances, that no matter was the a, situation. That was an excellent punt by Ben Lennon and now, Florida A&M can't kneel the ball down. No, they, they have to run the ball because out. Because it'll be a safety. Right. But that punt, it was a high arcing punt. It landed at the 15 yard line and just spun towards the end zone. And it was quick thinking by the gunner, or gunners, there were three of them down there wearing black and, and yellow, uh, to get down there and get that ball down. One, two, he stops and he had to let it out. but. He yeah. Both feet stop right before you get into the end zone, he, and they was pushing the ball out. Yeah, it was tw number twelve, Robert Simmons, who leaped into the end zone, pushed the ball back wow. over the line, and then it was down at the one yard line. Ooh. This puts FAMU in the end zone, basically yep. right at the one yard line. Musa standing in his own end zone. It's going to be a jet sweep, and somehow Xavier Smith got out of the end zone, and he's still running. There's a flag on the play. Flag on the play as Smith gets up to the 16 yard line. I thought they had Xavier Smith dead to rights there for a safety, but it looks like it might be holding because a lane opened wide in the middle of the field after that cutback. We'll see what the call is. I think it's going to be holding. That was Eddie Walls the third on the stop. It is holding. So Florida hit will go from the one yard line to the half yard line. Ooh, and half a yard. Ooh, and that's pushing. Do it again. That's pushing. Well, with only 127 to go, at this point, if you're fam, you, you just take the safety? Just take the safety. You, you might want to. Yeah, just take the safety and just back up out of there because you already got control of the game. Mm -hmm. Offensively, this quarter, uh, Bethune Cookman hadn't had to do a whole lot or couldn't do a whole lot. Yeah. But 
as a competitor, now you don't just give up and you just don't lay down like that. Nope. Musa standing halfway back in his own end zone, hands it off, and they got out of the end zone. Nice push by the offensive line and Terrell Jennings to get up to the three yard line. And the clock will Mason roll Hall. down under a minute to go. Mason Hall was right there and he saw it coming and he saw the ball coming right at him with the ball carrier. So he just clobbered him up and said, hey, let me just stop you right here and there. Yeah. Again, for a half second, it looked like they had the running back bottled up in the backfield. But it's something about being a running back and you keep them legs moving. You got to keep them legs turning to get out of the end zone. Yep. And now, there's the victory formation. They can safely kneel it down as they're on the three yard line. 45 seconds to go. I'm looking for the play clock. 38 seconds. And they and kneel it counting, down. And they kneel down. That will do it. The orange and green clad faithful for the second year in a row celebrate a Florida Blue Florida Classic victory. The Wildcats pushed them. The Wildcats were close at times, but in the end, the Rattlers won the day. They take this one 41 to 20. Wow. Bethune Cookman has been right there the whole season uh, with plenty of close call games, and it just ended up like how the rest of the season ended up. Uh, just penalties, penalties that play a factor in. This is the result that Bethel yeah. Cookman has been dealing with all season long. And I think next year, I think some of those close losses, they turn to wins, you know? Yeah, yeah I believe next year will be that game that next season will be that turning point for Bethel Cookman because you're going to get a lot of new offensive weapons to come in, a lot of new defensive weapons that's going to come in, and it can change the demeanor of the whole entire season. And you've got Jalen Jones coming back. He's only a junior this year. He's got one more year of eligibility. So. And I know Coach Sims is excited for that one. He's, you know, he's got a good arm. He's got good legs. He had the probably the biggest play of the game for Bethune Cookman. That's yeah, fifty nine that yards scamper, with that. <laughs> and that's what really changed the momentum for Bethune Cookman because they were what third and 15, third right. and eleven, and he scampered all the way, flipped the field, and BCU had the momentum from there and scored fourteen straight points. Unfortunately, FAMU rattle, um, the Rattlers uh, rallied and got back on top and eventually closed the game out. Here is your scoring summary. First quarter. FAMU got on the board with a three-yard rush by McLeod. Then with 5.01 to go in the first quarter, it was McLeod, a two-yard rush for a 13-point lead. BCU got on the board with a Bird nine-yard rush. That was the rush that also put Bird sixth all-time in rushing yep, yards at Bethune-Cookman sure University. Then also in the second quarter, FAMU scored again. A Xavier Smith touchdown pat reception by Musa. And then Musa caught a pass from Smith on the next drive on the Philadelphia Special, which was the first of two impactful trick plays today to make the score 27 to seven at halftime. Then Bethune Cookman got it going. In the third quarter, Ellington caught a 15 yard pass over the middle by Jones for a touchdown. And Everett caught a pass over the middle by Jones at the goal line for a touchdown. Two straight touchdowns for Bethune Cookman. They were within seven, but then FAMU Colt, uh, closed it out following a fake punt pass for a first down after FAMU was backed up to a third and 12 at around midfield. Gross converted a reception thrown by Musa, and then to, fi to finish it off, Jennings, a seven yard rush with about five minutes to go that made the final score 41 to 20. And that's how we close it out here at Camping World Stadium. FAMU with their special plays and came out with the trick plays and they did the job. They did the job in winning this game. Congratulations going out to FAMU, to Florida a and Rattlers on a job well done. And this is a bid for the FCS Bowl. Yeah, and we'll, we'll see tomorrow when the FCS playoffs get released if they're in that top 24 that makes the FCS playoffs. And if they even do get to host the first round up in Tallahassee, that'll be big, big for the SWAC, big for HBCU football. So it, it'll be great to see a HBCU school in the, FC, in the FCS Bowl bid to play and to have something to the 10 4. Well, That'll do it from us. Hey, here. Mike, it's been real. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, you know, we didn't tell you this on the broadcast, but I was originally supposed to call this game with Ryan Davis. He couldn't get here today. Chris, with about 15 minutes to go, said, hey, I'll jump on. 
jumped on, put the headset on, and did a fantastic job. Thank you so much for, for calling the game with me. Once again, your final score here from Camping World Stadium in Orlando. The Florida a and Rattlers, 41. The Bethune-Cookman Wildcats, 40. For Darren McCaskill and our entire BCU uh, yeah, and our entire Cat Eye Network crew here at the stadium. My name is Michael Torillo saying so long. We'll see you next football season, and we will see you next week inside more gymnasium for basketball. Thank you for listening, and good night.